My bad. Am I streaming now? I'm live. I think I'm live. All right. <laughs> Darn it. Something, <laughs> something weird was going on. Hello, everybody. And welcome back to another I Want to Hug That Gator stream. Mostly because I want to hug that gator. Let's go. Do you all want to hug that gator? Because I know I want to hug that gator. I think. Do you want to hug that gator? <laughs> uh, yes, I do. So, let's see what we got here. September 25th. It's been nearly a full month and things are starting to feel natural in school now. Well, at least compared to my old schools, except now I've actually made some good friends. Pretty sure we're good friends, anyways. I don't really know how to measure friendship. Outside of that party a few days ago, I haven't hung out with any of them outside of school. If friends just hung out at school and good friends did stuff outside of school, where does that put us? Uh, that's a good question. Well, it's still earlier in the school year. I'll figure out the friendship conversation uh, right at some point. <laughs> that's funny. Jade, focus! Oh, dang, it's Coach. Coach Sully. Leaving my current thoughts, I realized I've been in the middle of climbing a rock wall in the gymnasium. So I'm a little tired. Oh, why was I spacing out again? Uh-oh. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, no. Whoa! He's upside down. All right, all the blood rushing to my head. Oh! Well, that... All right, peel yourself off my majestic gym floor and hit the showers. Ouch. Whew! Made it just in time. Take my seat right next to Olivia and let myself relax for a second. Gator girlfriend, guys. Gator alert. Gator moment. <laughs> Gator moment. Oh, man. I love this game for that. It's funny. I will admit I kind of wish the 4chan kind of elements of the first game were, st were a little bit more prevalent. Not to say it's bad or anything. Uh, this is really well written. I think there's a lot more in this game so far than Snoop Game has had. But, you know, the real question is, does it have the same quality? I think it actually has better quality, but I'm interested. I take my seat ne right next to Olivia and let myself relax for a second. Olivia is, as usual, doodling away on her notebook. Well, it's art class, so you can't blame her for doing that. I take a quick peek at her new work, curious to see who she's trying to turn into a caricature today. Instead, the page is full of, filled with various scribbles of what looks to be a rat. Guys, is this Lario? Is this Emperor Rat? Rat Emperor? The only piece of shading for its fur is just on its head, save for a white spot around its right eye. <laughs> Looks like the same one she doodled on the note we passed around in history class. The mirrored mural shows it in various poses and scenarios. Some basic and some pretty creative. There's even one wearing a cape and wielding a ridiculously giant sewing needle like a sword. <laughs> That's kind of adorable. <laughs> These riot doodles of yours are pretty cute. Thanks. Actually, that reminds me. Look who else I drew over the weekend. Oh, is it me? She flips a couple pages of her sketchbook and holds it up for me to see. Much to my surprise, it's none other than Mia! Oh, that's... Okay, that's unexpected. Olivia decided to draw her as what I can only describe in the most flattering ways as a... <laughs> that's not good. Her clothes are even more ripped than her usual attire. Her jacket is filled with all kinds of unflattering patches, and her hair is styled into a gaudy mohawk that only detracts slightly from her face full of piercings and rings. In fact, she has a couple of rings piercing her eyelids to the point that I think it would be impossible to keep her eyes open and from from their weight. Sheesh. And that's not even getting into all the tattoos that Olivia's drawn on Mia's face. That's not very nice, Olivia. I can't help but let her snicker at the sight. It's funny. You like. She's smarting a, smarting a smug grin as she looks my way. I mean, it's funny, but how could she even breathe with all those nose rings? Doesn't need to. She's like, full of hard air already. The girl trickles at her own joke. I bet if she saw it, steam would blow out her ears. <laughs> yeah, she'd stomp around easily and then do nothing else. Seems like you have a pretty good idea on how she works. She's just predictable. It's not rocket science. Oh, who are these people? We're interrupted by a pair of students. I recognize them. I th although I only know one of their names. Yo, Inko, my Humi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so bad. My homie. So I saw that what you submitted for the contest, and I just love it. 
It was so good I just had to show it to my friend. Okay. Yeah, man, I just had to come see it. Who made it when Lenara told me about, about it. Oh, I, oh, look at her face. She's looking away. And when she told me, I was like, oh my god, I just knew that I saw you. You had an, that artistic spirit. That makes me feel kind of uncomfortable, actually. Like... You know, I, I really feel like these people are... Okay, so I actually like this a lot because I've kind of had it from my personal experience as well. And it's like... These people are treating him differently just because he's human. Like, it's they're literally giving him, like, Humi and all this other stuff. And it seems kind of cool, but when you think about it, they're really just doing it for their personal enjoyment, aren't they? Like, they're not really doing this because they want to make him feel better. And now they're making a big deal about something he made. Pretty damn fantastic, especially for a newbie. I'm a bit taken aback by her backhanded compliment. I know, right? It's pretty clever. Like, it's very clear they don't actually think very highly of him, now do they? No joke, and alligators are like my favorite animals. Alligators. Gators are pretty cool. They are pretty cool. James Rivas. Mr. Rivas. Alligators are pretty cool indeed. Indeed. <clears throat> you know? I think so anyway. I like gators. I have a gator head in my... Actually, no, I take that back. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Still, it is a compliment. The first real one I've had since or heard since coming to St. Hammond. About my art, I mean. Oh my gosh, I never introduced myself, did I? I'm Kiara. It's so nice to meet you. Man, these girls... Let me say this right now. The thing that I feel kind of uncomfortable about is I feel like the reason that they're actually here... And I, I know a lot of girls like this. I feel like they're the kinds of girls to date someone. Like, they're, 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 you know those white girls that date black dudes because they want to say that they did it? Uh, unironically, that's a fucking thing. It's actually uncomfortable. You know, it's like, oh, once you're black, you never go back. But in all actual, like, seriousness, I've seen girls say that, and then they, like, unironically will, like, try and get away from them, like, very quickly. And it's pretty messed up. And it's like, they just want to be like, oh, my diversity. Like, it's like their bucket list, and they just scratch it off. <laughs> you know? And it's not like all girls are like that, by the way. There's tons of girls that actually want to love people, you know, who want to love them back, and it's, it's really nice. But there are a lot of girls that are like that. And it makes me wonder, like, who's the victim? The one who actually feels like they need to do that because that's, like, what's expected of them. Like, that's shallow mentality. Or the ones who are, like... Or, or the dude who's getting screwed over by it. I feel like the dude would be the one who's getting screwed over more. But at the same time, it feels pretty shallow. It feels pretty sad for the... For the girl, too. That's just my view. I like gators. <clears throat> yeah, likewise. Cool. I mean, it's not like, it's not that great of a piece. I just, it's just something I had on hand. Oh. Really? Okay, nice. Last minute? Yeah. Damn, you're selling yourself way too short there. Yeah, your work is absolutely gorgeous. Mm. Yeah, I think we should hang out sometime. Ooh, yeah, they're trying to get into his pants. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, shit, the bell's ringing. Dude, I told you, yeah, these kinds of chicks, I know. I had a feeling. See, this is why Olivia was just looking away, because she knows what they're doing. I, I, I had a feeling this is what was going on as well. Already? Damn. <laughs> I, said, I said that before she even put it. So. I mean, don't get me wrong. If I was Inkyo, I would be a, I would be a happy man. You know? Getting all the ladies like that. But at the same time, it's just kind of like... <sighs> I mean... I feel bad for Olivia. It must be really uncomfortable to have to deal with this, you know? And dudes probably don't go for Olivia because she's like, you know... You know, she's an undesirable, as some would say. And it sucks because I know this is a thing and it sucks a lot. I mean, it's not always the case. I got a friend of mine named Ricky. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what his like, full name is, but uh, I just call him Ricky Burrick. It's what I nickname him. And he has like a... His girlfriend actually has a lot of difficulty walking and stuff, so... You know, it, and she's, she, you know, it's really nice. <laughs> you know, I, it's been a while, though. Oh, I don't know if it was a girlfriend. I think he was just trying to date her. I don't know. I hope they did well. Because, honestly, like, you know, she, she deserves. I feel like a lot of people deserve better than they get. You know? 
Well, it was nice seeing you again, Inko. Keep up the great work. Thanks, Lunera. Kiara, thank you so much. Oh, wait, 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 let me just... There we go now. Oh, wait, no, she's... Okay, whatever. Be seeing you later. Yeah, it'll be seeing you real soon, Inko. Those girls are bad news. They want to... I can't help but smile as my new friends wave their goodbye and depart. Buddy, they're not just good friends. They're, they're, uh... They're, they're a little more than that, or a little different than that. A heady feeling of joy watching through my head as I replay their words of praise repeatedly. I don't know, man. If you're into dinos, it's good for you. If you're not, well, damn. In the corner of my eye, Olivia's smile reflects the overwhelming cheer I'm feeling. Though it seems to vanish the moment I look her way. <laughs> seems like you're becoming the talk of the school. Yeah, but, like, the real question, is that a good thing or a bad thing? I don't think that's a good thing. I think he's getting the talk because he's different. And, like, that can be sort of good at times, even if it's kind of shallow. But, you know, it can be kind of positive. But I feel like he's just becoming a pariah. Like, they're talking about him because... Not because they actually care about him, but because they actually just seem as different. You know, for some of the girls, it's like, ooh, I can I can tap that. I, I know people... You know, it's kind of funny how there's all this male lingo. Like, there's that. That's the thing you expect for, like, dudes. Like, a man to do that. And she's like, oh, I'm going to tap that. Like, that's the kind of thing. But if you think about it, women do it way more. You know, they just do it differently. You know? I mean, I hope that I get some positive feedback about my work, but I didn't realize that it would be that good. Olivia chews her lip in contemplation before turning to me. Say, Inko, can I see your submission? Ooh. You know, something I'm kind of curious about here is whether or not they're juxtaposing him getting in and her getting in. Because we already know Olivia feels like, potentially at least, her artwork was only considered as great as it was because because she is in a wheelchair that's what she feels that's her that's her sad situation that's her sad story on the other hand ingo might be getting in the same situation just because he's the only human in the school and he's a minority pretty much so that means that it'd be different for that. See, this is what I like about this. This is good storytelling. This is actually just using, like, normal... This is, like, using rhetorical... Like, this is just using rhetorical devices and, and literary devices, to be precise, in a good, compelling fashion. And they're using the style of art, like, artistic expression, to bring it to life visually for us to see. Which allows the author to, to kind of more easily... Rather than just, like, having words, you know, which, by the way, I'm not saying writing isn't good. You know, novels are their own thing, by the way. But in this visual novel, graphic novel, but game play-wise, allows them to connect to us, the audience, in a much more precise way. Which I think is pretty impressive. I, I, I really like where this is going. Sure, give me a second. I'm looking unprepared, as not only do I have my portfolio drive... But I finally set up a cloud drive for it. I <laughs> said, I finally got my cloud drive, my Google Drive. Or my Google in this case. It's as simple as opening up the application on my phone and swiping to the exact digital copy to present it to Olivia. Ta-da! Consider I consider it my magnum opus. I thought you said it was just something you found. Magnum opus! I finally got to say it. You keep a copy of it on your phone? I got my whole portfolio in cloud storage. I learned it was good practice from a carpal artist blogs. So what do you think? Oh, uh... Olivia skins on my phone as she does her best to formulate her opinion. Ooh. It's, uh, nice. Oh, wow. The compost of is really something. You mean composition? Yeah, that. You did great, Inko. <laughs> oh, wow. Huh, getting a compliment from Olivia for my work feels a bit alien to me. But maybe, just maybe, this was start of something new. Hmm... Yeah, I can almost feel it now. I don't know about that. Inko Ginito, ace photographer, capable of capturing masterpieces through a photo lens. Yeah, that has a nice ring to it. You are not... I, I forgot the guy's name. The guy who took that really popular MLK photo and Einstein photo and all those other photos. Olivia must see my self-congratulatory grin because her own drops. There's <laughs> that eyebrow. All right, you did good. You don't let it go to your head. When the grin remains, she forces it off by helping me in the chest. Gah! Warned you. <laughs> That's going to leave a breeze. <laughs> With that exchange behind us, Olivia and I get ready for class. 
That's funny. Oh, as was the norm by now, Mr. Latican began class with some violent, abusive school property. Good morning, good morning. Now settle down, we've got announcements to go over. I sit back in my seat, suddenly feeling out the spot where Olivia smacked me to my me to check. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so bad at reading. Yep, a bruised sheesh. As the pale pterodon continued on reading from the announcements sheet, he like he did every day. I found myself lost in my own thoughts. Nothing else really happens that I consider out of the ordinary. Things that are new, like the school itself, are finally starting to become mundane. Ah, that makes sense, because like when something new is like, you know, there isn't much change on it, you know, it becomes old rather than new. Later at lunch, I'm rallying off my best stand-up to Olivia while Damien's out getting seconds. Liz had retreated to her usual space in the rafters. And then he says, Oh, good up. God damn! Olivia's hand flies through her nose, trying and failing to contain the snort-filled laughter. It sets off for change reaction as my own laughter spills over my mouthful of cheap school burger. Borgier. Ha. Olivia. God, you suck at comedy, Inko. <laughs> you suck at comedy, Inko. You're terrible. Olivia drinks greedily from her canteen to alleviate her sore vocal cords. Why is that? Is that because she's a gator, or is it because she doesn't talk that much? Is that why you're all out of breath? It was a pity laugh. Oh, wow. Stick to photography. Wow. You got a better one? The mood is slow to settle, but once Olivia has got her breath, she speaks with a snide smile. In fact, I do. So a Triceratops, a T-Rex, and a rhino, a rhino Rex find a lamp. Her mouth comes shut and go, eyes go wide. Olive. Ah, perfect. I was looking for you too. Oh, no. Ben's here. Oh, Olivia doesn't look very happy. Olivia casts her eyes down to her lunch, sparing her mystery meat roughly with a talon. She's her finger. Hey, Ben, what's up? I figured I'd come by and congratulate you on your submission entry. This again? Oh, he. Yeah, this is such a clever setup. He's getting the same treatment Olivia probably got. Oh, dude, this is so clever. This is really well written. This is actually clever. He's getting the same treatment. And, oh, dude. You know, I can't blame Olivia for not being happy with everyone when this is the kind of thing going on behind the scenes. Like, she knows this is manipulation. That's so messed up, though. Man. By the way, if you guys want, you can go and chat. Two votes so far. We got people who do want to hug the gator. I mean, it is my best piece, but all the praise for it is still surprising. It's exhilarating, all these compliments and everything. You know, the sad thing about it is I wouldn't be surprised if the thing that sucks about this, what they're actually pointing out here, and this is a right-wing talking point, yes, technically some people would point out, but I think it is a truthful one. It, it, it's one founded in truth. And that is when you bring up someone's race or something about them that is, uh, you know, away from their art, you kind of start to separate, you know, the actual achievement from the artist. You start to make it something that, you know, think about it like this. Imagine if you drew something really good, that would have actually won, regardless of who you were. But the reason that they're actually giving it to you is even though it's good, even though it has a lot of depth to it, they don't really care as much about that. And instead, they see you as this kind of black sheep. And they don't want you... They don't want you to actually win. You know, they don't actually want it because you did well. They want to do it because, oh, gosh, the symbolism. And, and look at him, you know, he's, he's the first human we've ever had. That's just so messed up, and yet I've, I, I'll actually be honest with you, I have seen I have seen stuff like this before in real life, which is kind of messed up. I'll be right back, I go to the restroom, I'll be like 5 seconds, or 10, no, 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 30 seconds.
Okay, I'm back. Sorry, my... There it is. There it is. That's better. Okay, I'm back. So... <clears throat> All the compliments are good and all. Thanks, man. Hey, maybe I'll be the winner of the contest. Don't say that. Oh, jeez. I, I think this is actually really clever. Gator, gator, get yes, gator, gator, gator. I like that gator. I think it's interesting, but it's also like, you know, it's just kind of sad to think about. You know. Thanks, man. Hey, maybe I'll be the winner of the contest. I mean, maybe. What do you think, Olivia? Oh, dude, Olivia probably realizes that it's like, it's more likely that he will actually, but not for the reasons that you think. The Green Gator girl flinches. Ben shakes his head. Ooh. Also, Olivia, great to catch you here. Principal Scaler wants for me to remind you that you need to clean up after yourself. Oh, wow. Leaving messes in classes can disrupt students in other periods. That's true. Scaler said that. Why not tell Olivia herself? That's true. Well, I mean, maybe she's busy. She's busy and tired of reminding you. Oh. <clears throat> Olivia scoffs at the mention of our principal. He keeps her mouth shut, uh, firmly closed. Must not be that important, then. Inko, I just spent my entire second period cleaning up her mess because she's not taking anything seriously. I'm not supposed to be Scaler's errand, errand boy, and I'm certainly not supposed to be a personal janitor. It's true. I'm left to frown at Olivia, giving Ben the silent treatment. Does it wrong me to think she'd be more open with everyone else like she is with me? Do you know how hard it is to scrub baking soda out from the carpet once it's dried? Why is there baking soda on the carpet? Can you just try not to make other people's lives harder? Ooh, okay, whoa. That's... Mm, it's probably unintentional, but... Man, what the hell? Oof. I... Oh. Oh, dude. <sighs> You know, the funny thing about it is, though, it's a good point. And yet... <sighs> that's... Damn. <sighs> Dude, that's fucked. That's messed up. That's that's actually messed up. I mean, it's, it's kind of a good point, though. And I feel like the sad thing for her is she's probably had told herself that so many times that she just feels like she should be a birding because it's her whole thing. And that's a terrible mentality to have. That's so bad. Aw. Let me try shooting me in, in different glands, uh, glaze. Or gaze. <laughs> glaze glance. It cracks me a bit into embarrassment when I don't return it. Ben's comment is completely uncalled for. I can't just stand around if she's not even going to defend herself. I mean... <sighs> It's not like you should justify that kind of behavior. You shouldn't make a mess. But it's kind of like, number one, if she did make a mess, I will say this much, it's probably not easy for her to actually do it. I mean, it's probably not bad either. I mean, it depends, though. This is so bad. It's so unfair. I just feel so bad for her. But not for her, like, being paraplegic. More like having to deal with the, the stupidity of the stuff around her. Ugh. Come on, Ben. Leave her alone. My point being, Olivia, this is completely ridiculous. I expect better from you. Expect? How can you... Whoa! That came out a little wrong. Well, I expect her to do the bare minimum and not waste my time. Dude. Aw, dude. Don't... You just made it even worse, man. Dude! <sighs> um, I'll be right back. I gotta take a moment. Oh my gosh. Yeesh, indeed. That was the worst thing she he could have said. I'm... Oh, my God. I'll, I'll be right back, bro.
Okay, I'm back, everyone. I'm back. Let's go. Sorry about that. That's my fault. <clears throat> I had to just go get something to eat. Olivia doesn't even bother looking at Ben. Instead, she's looking at me with that sad face until she quietly wheels away from us. I think it wasn't. I went a little too far there. Man. She's a brown size. And left standing there. Oh, jeez, dude. That bad? Mia really wanted me to have lunch with her today. She's definitely going to give me an earful after school. He glances at his phone and grimaces at the notification. Spoke too soon. She's giving me one right now. Damn. Well, you should probably grab your lunch while there's still time. Ben glances up at one of the clocks in the lunchroom. There's only about ten minutes of lunch left. Ah, oh, you're right, but the lines usually close five minutes ago. His fist hammers his palm in an epiphany. Oh, you use the vending machines out there. Anything good there? I've been enjoying the Atomic Hot Taquitos like recently. But Damien tells me he's a bigger fan of bitter melon bites. Bitter melon it is. I don't think my tail can handle that much amount of cap capsic. A man gets up from his seat. <laughs> Jeez, dude. Let's go! <gasps> Who said they don't want to hug the gator? We have one vote that says no. You're a villain. I'm gonna find you in real life one of these days. Oh, shit. Right into Damien's first deck with high. Oh, no. His face must have thrown his onto the floor. Ouch. Poor Ben. <laughs> the mystery meat cushions is fall. Oh, on the dark side, the mystery meat cushions is fall. Whoa, Ben, you all right? I jumped myself to go help him. Bleh. I'm seeing a welcome around the cafeteria. All eyes are on us. I already hear it starting. Oh, jeez. It's over for Ben. Huh? Ah, uh, that's clever. What the f- What? That's pretty clever. Ah. That's actually pretty clever. See, that's how you stay composed, man. I'm both impressed and jealous. You okay? Thought you couldn't eat meat. Nah, even if I swallowed any, it'd take a lot more than that to be an issue. I'll be fine. Thanks for the concern, though. Even if as he brushes off the lunch from grime. Ben carries himself with dignity. That is how you do it. Politics, man. You just gotta stay composed. The second you're not composed, you're dead. That's a fact. I take take it from me. Experience. What he just did there, best thing he could have done. If that had been me. This guy's some seriously quick wit. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's why he's here. I was looking forward to eating that. Why on earth did you even have that much meatloaf? <laughs> Let me have the leaf doers. Although now it's gone a bit to waste. Oh man, poor janitor. <laughs> no. <laughs> Do not eat the floor meat, Damien. Next class tells the fist fighting gang wars cease on command. Everyone starts milling towards the exits. It's true. Disaster avoidance, that's what you call it, man, yeah. It's the most important skill one can have. I agree with that completely. That is how you do it, man. That's how you do it, man. That's the truth. We got eight votes. We got seven which voted yes to wanting to hug the gator. One... Look, I'm sorry. We got to ban whoever whoever put no. We got to ban you, bro. How could you democratically do that? To have everything under control is see trouble from a mile away and make it a non-issue even when it takes you by surprise. That sort of social capital is something I need. Agreed. 
Maybe it's a little selfish, but if I were seen that way, when, then any sudden happenings would be forgiven instantly. Of course, Ben isn't alone. The world is full of people with that skill. Only I'd be lying if I said most of them deserved it. That's true. Most people are able to get away with stuff use their unique ability for just that, getting away with stuff. Which should be seen as a blessing as a, of a social buffer. It's just some enabling trait of theirs. A charismatic get-out-of-jail-free card. That is absolutely true. I'll actually admit the truth of it is that a lot of people... I, I kind of have that ability, but I feel uncomfortable with whenever I see the ability to use it. Because usually it's when I've actually made a mistake. Like, a real mistake. And, like, doing it is so tempting to just get away from it, right? It's so tempting. You know, I don't usually do that, you know, unless it's, like, for something more serious. like Or, or not serious, like, something that, you know, is not as bad. You know, or just feel like it's unnecessary to make such a big deal out of it. But on a more serious note... It's uncomfortable because the best times to use that kind of charisma is usually when you're in, like, an actual mistake that you made. Like, you actually did something wrong and you shouldn't have done it. And you hurt people. And, you know, it's that's when you should not use it, really. That's when you should at least admit to your mistake. But that's when it's most useful. <laughs> so, yeah, he's got a point. If I had that ability, I'd use it to push myself to my belt and my limits, both artistically and productively. That's a good way to do it. That's a good mentality. That's my ultimate goal. Agreed. Ben is one of the good ones, definitely. Well, I hope. I hope he is. We hope he is. But who knows? He's definitely earned my respect over this. The question remains, though. How do I get like that? That line of thinking is cut off as I round the next corner. Oh, jeez. Oh, Mia's gonna bully Olivia. I wanna talk to you, Olivia. He said Olivia. Oh, jeez. Olivia doesn't even want to talk. Oh, come now. Don't be such a killjoy. I'm trying to be nice here. The grin on Mia's face is jovial as she stands before the wheelchair-bound girl. Her tail lazily swing as she has Olivia. Man, I never realized how lethal those spikes on her tail look. After all, I have to be nice to someone as talented as Olivia, don't I? Oh no, jeez. Behind her are a pair of similar smiling Saurian girls. It's- oh no. Actually, wait a minute. Those two. Yep, they're the clique. They're Mia's friends. Yes, they are. I mean, it makes sense when you think about the fact that Mia's boyfriend- as the girlfriend- or Mia's boyfriend is Ben. And these two knew Ben as well. Or she knew Ben. Lenora at least did. Kiara, I don't know. I mean, she knows her way around a palette and canvas. Right, Livia? A paraplegic Picasso here. Wow! That's you, right? I can't imagine how useless you must feel otherwise. Oh my god, dude. Leave her alone. Oh my god. Mia takes a step towards Olivia, her previous expression taking on a more ominous air. Dude, what is wrong with this chick? Uh-oh, yeah, I know, right? Yet for all that talent and untapped potential, you seem to lack some of the basic suspect of a functioning young adult. Oh no, Ben told her about the the issue. Oh no. Mia's lips part, revealing a cruel grin. I hear you've been really dirty, messy little baby, leaving your stuff everywhere in class. Oh my god. Jeez, dude. Dude, this is actually disgusting. Hmm. Oh my god. Stop making it mine, wow. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow! Oh my gosh, this is terrible. This is like some serious bullying, oh my god. Lamar Brothers, this is terrible. Mm. 
Oh my god. We're all just one big happy family or no they are not. Lord knows some of us could here could use one. Oh my god, dude. I don't even know how to respond to that either, dude. Oh my god, dude. She's a freaking monster. Dude, what is wrong with this bitch? Oh my god. Dude. What kind of... Wow. This is a bully-free zone, my friends. This right here is the bully-free zone everyone talks about. What kind? Yeah, I want to know the context too, dude. Is it that bad? Hmm. <laughs> Kiara. Oh no. A draw. Looks like looks like Kiara's the one who's gonna get fucking the sh I shouldn't curse, but she's the next one. She's the next victim. Uh oh. Uh oh. Kiara, I swear I'll kill you one of these days. Olivia takes the opportunity to move past Mia. Jeez. Just for my friends. Whoa, leaving so soon. Dude, she's giving the L, the Fortnite L. No response. And so quickly, that's almost normal walking speed. <laughs> I was honestly thinking you needed a cool nickname with your need for speed. Hot wheels. Oh, my God. She gone was in right with shock. How the hell? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, jeez. Oh, my God. Dude, I mean, you, someone needs to stop this. Holy fuck. Jeez, man. Dude, this is actually messed up. What is happening here, dude? This is just bullying. Like, this is just ruthless, terrible, bad bullying. She needs a hug. This is actually terrible, bro. What the... F Dude, I have never seen something quite this ruthless. Am I not good enough for you? Oh, no. Oh, my God. I think this is bullying. Dude, you think this is bullying? This is freaking worse than that. This is this is just Oh my god. This is monstrous. It's unfair. It's like when you're in line trying to use the restroom after hours and hours of waiting and someone cuts in front of you and completely inexcusable. I think it's much worse than that actually. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. I, I. Oh no. What do I choose? What do I choose? I feel like I should show support for Olivia, but not defend her. Because defending her would just make it worse. Like, they just make fun of that as well. Okay, I'm ending the poll. Choose wisely. Okay, let me start a poll. Should I should I defend or don't forget to say if you're right, that's a good point. That's a really good point. That's a I'm having my OBS. Is wrong with my OBS? Why is my OBS Okay, that was weird. Okay, that was weird. Did something happen to the stream? Is something wrong with the stream? Oh, that was strange. That was really strange. Should I defend or... Let me put a poll up. Should I defend or support Olivia? 
I think, support. Well, I'll, I'll put the poll up. Yes, for defense. You can vote. Just don't spoil stuff. I'm starting the poll. Here's the poll. Okay, poll is up, guys. Should I depend or support? I feel like supporting is what I should do. I'm going to save right now. Oh, this is such a hard decision. Yeah, you fucking failed last time. Besides, I'd probably fumble the world to make myself look like a fool anyway. Exactly! Show some support. She's your friend, but that doesn't mean you have to fight her battles. They're her battles. It's her battles, guys. They're not our battles. Jeez, dude. Now that she has someone beside her. Let's go! The hell? Uh oh. Yeah, hey, I know that jacket. Bro, you know that jacket? He's the only human in the school. Oh, crap. If it ain't baldy. <laughs> you know what? Actually, yeah, you guys aren't bald. You guys actually have hair, apparently. That can't be real. It's gotta be a wig or something. No, see, see, this is how you deal with bullies. I have experience. Boom, chaka. Boom, chaka, laka. That would kid on YouTube. Yo. As if we learned anything from Snoot Game. You know, man. I, I think I made the right decision. I think I made the right decision. I think I made the right decision. Let's go. I think I was, you know, the other decision I made earlier on with the, you know, saying that her family needs her, I think I should have just tried to persuade her to come out because maybe that was a little too forced. Even if I think I'm right about that. This, though, I think this is more chill. I don't respond, so I keep my head forward and keep on walking with Olivia. Giga Chad move. That seems to catch me a bit off guard as I can hear the gears in her mind visibly start to turn. See, this is how you deal with bullies. Eating bacon IRL. It's just how you do it. I'm still talking to you, Hot Wheels. Oh no. Mm hmm. Dude. Dude. Oh my god. Then <laughs> waste this magic. Mm. See, I, I made the right decision, man. I made the right decision, man. Uh, you really got her, Mia? Yeah, definitely showed that leathery, 
lady. Angered by their pity comments. Ooh! Oh, she's not happy. No, that's my cue to leave. Uh-oh! Grace of a headless stick, and I scramble down the hallway to catch up with Olivia. Right in the corner, there's no Olivia to be found. She Oh, she probably went off real fast. Uh-oh. Oh, no, now you're the alone one. I like how Mia's not even a predator. She's a freaking herbivore. Oh, Olivia. Thank God, indeed. Ah, <sighs> damn. Should I have some cute balls? No, it has to use that wheelchair of hers instead. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> she's right outside. Jeez, dude. He's yiking out. Yeah, I think I... Oh, you're in Lethal Company right now? Okay, see you, kid, on YouTube. Did I make the right decision? Yo, the Mob Brothers. I made the right decision, didn't I? I had to have, man. That was my Riz decision. Yo, I literally have skibbity, skibbity Riz, guys. That's what I got, guys. Oh, my God. I got it. I did it, guys. As I catch the breath I had unknowingly held, my eyes aligned with a pair of silver serpentine eyes. I, uh... I appreciate what you did for me back there. You're welcome, Olivia. Oh, my bad. Dang it. You're welcome. I'm surprised. I'm not sure what to say back, really. I know what to say. Hey. Instead, I smile back and not exactly show her that Riz. In return, she gives me a half smile before recomposing herself. You should uh, roll with me in the elevator now. Yo, personal time in the elevator? Let's go. Isn't that kind of like a metaphor for this being her safe space? If you think about it, how come? Well, you've just become enemies with her. Oh, that's true. If she sees you, you'll be a wad of gum under her boot. Oh, joy. <laughs> yeah. Whatever you think is right. Don't you tell me whatever I think is right is right. Shut up, about Brothers. I know I made the right decision. This, that, this was the right decision. This was the right decision. Yeah, your best bet is to just avoid her now. Yeah. This way you stay out of the hallways. You know, if you think about it, if a bully bullies people too much, eventually everyone tries to avoid her. Like, eventually. And then she has a target on her back. I appreciate it. Don't mention it. Aww. Wait, the elevator will stop me from beating the snot out of me in the entire rest of the school? Yes. Mirror the small electronic bing of the elevator and the door slide open. History class is as bland as it usually is. Bruh. Stop saying it's bland. It's kind of cool. It's got like a pyramid. A pyramid's cool. Look at the pyramids. They're kind of cool. And they got like Sultan uh, Dino the Second or something. Mechmed? Procklin continues prattling on about some sort of historical event. I mean, yeah, it sounds like... Yeah. But most of my attention is on Olivia. She has her hoodie over her head and looks lost in thought. That altercation must have shaken her up more than I thought it would. Oh, jeez. A part of me wants to ask if she'll be okay, even though I'd already asked her three times already. <laughs> but the last thing I would want to do is prod at her. Yeah, I know how that feels. Jeez. Oh, I know how that feels. You don't want to prod people, but it's like sometimes it feels like you have to. It just, it sucks, but if you want to know for real, like, you need to ask. Even if they already gave you one. Oh man, this is funny. Jeez. This is scary. Talk about after school if she wants to anyways. Your first real confrontation with this bully at school. Wow. I heard once that when you get into a fight for the first time, you throw up from the adrenaline. No fists were thrown, but I feel about the same right now. Sometimes, some people, that's the case. Not every time, though. 
It depends. You might throw up, you might not. The Ma Brothers, I know I made the right decision. I'm wearing my hands together to try and study him. Jeez, I'm a wuss. Nah, you're just nervous. I stood up to Mia with Olivia and I end up in this mess. The final class ends and I'm set free for the day. Oh, Damien. Uh oh. And Liz is not wanting to look at Olivia. Liz probably looks at uh, Olivia like a liability. Not just because she does math and stuff, but also because in her eyes, she's one of the hardest things. That she's one of the things that makes it hard for her to be with Damien. I'm starting to see my friends huddled together in a tightly knit group. I usually don't see any of them after school. I always assume they left as soon as the bell rang. Hey guys, what's going on? Inko! Damien looks exceptional where he glances at me. Inko, you believe me, right? Pardon? Olivia's nostrils flare with an exasperated swore, snort. I didn't mean for any of that to happen. Well, yeah, I believe you, Damien. I know. What's uh, what's the matter, Damien? When Mia asked about the nickname stuff from so long ago, I just blurted it out. She didn't... You say she'd used it for something so unscrupulous. I'm ashamed that it took me more than a... Yeah, how could you not realize that's what this is related to? I mean, I guess he's got stuff going on. Guess Damien feels culpable for what Mia said, but why? I mean, shit, he probably shouldn't have told Mia. Like, I mean, that's a pretty private thing. And at the same time, also, Mia's just such a jerk. Like, <laughs> unironically, dude. She is really mean. So, yeah. You don't know what that word means. Hmm. What do you mean? <laughs> you know, y'all, wait, you mean he doesn't know what unscrupulous means? Who cares? <laughs> Let me search up unscrupulous definition. Unscrupulous. I'm pretty sure I know what it is, but just in case. Let me see what unscrupulous Something so mean and bad. No moral principles. No honest fair. Oh, that's kind of clever if you think about it. It's not honest or fair. And for Olivia, hmm, that's interesting. Oh man. Who cares? Inko, really, I didn't mean for any of that to happen. Now I got a target on my back, because I had to fight your battle. Hey, I believe you, man. Your heart is in the it was in the right place. I agree, his heart was in the right place. It just wasn't doing the right thing. Olivia told us what happened with Mia, calling her some nickname. Damien leans back over an unresponsive Olivia, hand spread in supplication. She said you were there too. I was. I was the Giga Chad in the situation, of course. I was, yeah. Olivia, you loved that nickname way back when we were kids. Uh, yeah, it's a long time, though. A roll over smoky eyes. You really didn't mean it, Olivia. I know already. Oh, jeez. She's mad. Mad Gator. For a split second, she bore row upon row of sharp teeth before gnashing her maw in frustration. Olivia's nostrils flare out with a huff of hot air, breath of, air, br of hot breath again. And I could practically see everything when one day finally weigh on her. We're just being you again, Damien. Oh, wow. Sometimes I wish you weren't, but whatever. That's kind of mean. Empty again. The nickname is just that. A nickname. I'm just... I don't want to hear it again. Especially from her. Especially if it's just to get under my skin. Olivia stares at Damien for a while before breaking contact and glance at, glance at Liz and I. Why not? Wait, did I say that? Uh-oh. Why did I ask that? It just kind of came out. Liz notices Damien still organizing his thoughts. Seeing as neither of the others are going to answer currently, I, she sighs. Well, I was around for this, but... When they were freshmen in middle school, Damien and Olivia would take the bus every week into an arcade in the city. I guess he came up with the nickname around then, and it stuck. Er, that's half right, but I didn't come up with it. I brought a chunk of change for us to play stuff with each other. A match on just about anything there was a quarter. Probably still is. But I don't think I won even once. Once she stood to win something, it's like a switch went off in her head. I'd never seen Olivia get like that. Some of the teenagers were watching too, they saw everything. 
couple challenged her once they ran out of cash, and sure enough, she ended up clearing a lot of house all afternoon. It was all she'd talk about after school, uh, all week until we could get back home for more. Only took like a month for her to be recognized as some local champion. Sometime along the way, people started calling her Hot Wheels. Don't remember really who or when, but I do know it's proof she got that fire in her. Okay, Damien, that's one way to put it. Shit. <laughs> okay. Wow. Yeah, that's. I had fun back then. Yeah, just fucking cool. God damn. I made the right decision, Lamau brothers. I know I did. I had fun back then. I do too. I guess I forgot I wasn't supposed to bring it up. Have things really changed that much? I think so, yeah. And you did again. Damien hisses to himself. Sorry. Damn. Just can't help yourself. I guess not. But you're right. That was the best time of my life. The name Hot Wheels belongs to 10-year-old me, not current me. Aww. Hey, that's a great story. You recognize so well that you got a cool nickname? It sounds amazing. Being a champion, being a winner. I'm all the same for the title. I'm not. <sighs> Jeez. What? I'm not a winner anymore. Aww. It's even worse when you think about the fact that it's probably because she's no longer... It's not just that either. It's like... You know, not only does she not feel like she doesn't deserve it, it's probably like she doesn't feel like anyone uses it for that anymore. Did I make the right decision? Did I make the right decision? I think I did. Because you don't go to the arcade anymore? If it's the one I'm thinking of, it's only like a half hour wait. Dude, that is not the reason, Liz. You are stupid. Olivia looks at Liz like she just recommended everyone watch the newest Netflix anime. <laughs> well, if this story is anything to go by, I'd like to see you be a winner again. Olivia's breath seems to hitch for a moment. Aww. And I'm sure these guys want to see it too. Damien's the one that dragged you to our lunch table all this time, right? Look at him, he's nearly kneeled o keeled over because he's afraid of losing that part of you. And Liz, I think I'd like to see why you and Damon are really close friends. Yeah. And just as quick as I gained the bravado to speak up, my learns left me immediately. Um, I think I actually put, put me on the spot there. Whoops. Well, your trail rolls along the ground a bit in contemplation. If you guys really care that much about it, I wouldn't mind it from you guys. All at once, Damien lights up. Yes! Let's go to the arcade. You're paying Hot Wheels. All right, Hot Wheels is back. You guys now refer to <laughs> you guys now refers to Liz and Nico and go. <laughs> Damien's shoulders drop for a moment, but he re right quickly recovers. Hey, if we're getting the nickname the name out again, we should go visit the arcade together sometime. I'd rather not. Okay, then how about a better name like Death Row? <laughs> no! No! <laughs> oh, no! Death Roll? Olivia swings her tail around to trip him, but he's fast enough to jump over it. Damien's word flunts out. Words of this account of the new games Olivia are trying to appease her. Many of which are shut down by her or leave Liz and die chuckling. <laughs> Death roll, and you're naming a gator that. It's fucking hell. Gradually, our giggles died down, and the four of us chatted a bit more about the day in general. Eventually, Damien and Liz headed their respective, wa respective ways, with Olivia deciding to stick around. Most of the schools filtered out to their various homebound rides or to their after-school activities, leaving Olivia and I all alone. 50-50. What do you mean, 50-50? Are you saying that the first decision I ever made was wrong? Because if so, I'm going to go back. I know what you're saying. Boy, what do you... What do you mean? Tell me now. Dude, I'm, I'm, you're literally going to make me search it up because you're making me that uncomfortable. You're literally going to make me search it up because you're making me that mad. Oh, I'm so mad. Hmm. 
dude, I, I just... Hmm. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No spoilers. I don't... <gasps> ah! <clears throat> Are you serious right now? Are you serious right now? 134. What do you mean 134? What 134? What? What do you mean? What? Oh my god. Oh my god. What are you saying to me? What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? What are you saying, man? You know what? I I think I know what happened. I think you I know you, but you guys, I'm not, I don't want to get spoiled. But guess what, guys? If what you're telling me is true, I know what I need to do. I know what I must do. I must go back in time. I must go back in time. Uh, once again, no, actually, let me just save this right here. Save. I know what I must do. I know exactly what happened. I'm going to use my powerful Time Lord powers. Yes. Oh, no. Something bad happened. Oh, no. Uh, I think I may have made a mistake. Uh, uh, quit. Oh, no. What did I just do? Oh no. I take it back, guys. Ah! What happened? Oh my god, what actually just happened? What the fudge? Oh my gosh, guys, mistakes were made. Mistakes mistakes were actually made. Oh my god, what what just happened? What just happened? What What just happened? <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> well, um Oh, I guess we're back here. Um, one second, let me just load. All right. Well, thankfully I saved, so um, let me just load here. <sighs> you know, I really wanted, man. Yeah, I don't think it worked either. Okay, I noticed that. Hey, I'll roll with you. <laughs> Did I make a wrong decision? Actually, just tell me, please. Because I will go back, actually, and I will fix it. Because I don't want to make a wrong decision. I feel like I should have invited her. Like, I will, like, actually go back in time. Like, I could just do that. I could just... I can continue. I, I could literally just scroll. Like, I could do that. Did I make a wrong decision? Did I make a wrong decision? The demo decision. A wrong decision. Was... I wasn't? Was the demo decision right? R you can't go back far enough. What do you mean? Was that the wrong decision? Tell me now. Bro, do not freaking... Just do, 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 do. I'm so mad right now. Was it bad? For the fourth ending. Because I know the fourth ending, if it's anything like Snoop Game, for the fourth ending, I want to get it first try. I want to get it first try. I better not have cockblocked myself out of it. Tell me now. Tell me now, boy. I better not have screwed this up. Tell me now. Tell me now. Yeah, the one at Damien's house. Yes. Yes. Just tell me. Just give it to me straight. I won't ask again. Because I'll know. That one was just really hard. Tell me now.
Tell me now. Come on, my brothers. Oh my god, I swear. If I told you, then... No, just tell me. Just... Just tell me! It would not ruin it. Don't tell me the endings. Don't tell me anything. Do not spoil anything. Just tell me if I made the right decision. Tell me. It, it was the wrong decision, wasn't it? It was the wrong decision, wasn't it? Tell me now. Dude, I know. I can tell. I can tell what you guys are saying to me. I know what you're saying. You're not even... You're... Dude, you're telling me without telling me. It's stupid. Just tell me right now. Be honest. Tell me, boy. Tell me now. The Mal Brothers, come on. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for you. Lunch money if I didn't display a time to make it to the next train. So the two of us take it easy. Oh, that's cute. Yo, look how beautiful this art is. Okay. No, you, you've already told me that was the wrong decision. I know exactly what you're telling me, buddy. I already know what you're talking about. I already know it. And you know what that means? I have to go back. Back to the past. I have to go back to the past. I already know what's going on here. How do I go back, though? Dang it, it freaking screwed up again. No, 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 go back. Ignore. Okay, that okay, well that just deleted everything again. Again. You know what that means, guys? I I gotta go back to the past. Back to the past. Samurai Jack. I can't freaking believe this. Do I not have the demo still or what? Let me think about this, actually, because I want to load back into that moment. So this is not making any sense, and it's not letting me go back, and I don't want, I don't know why. And I don't know why, I, I just, I don't know what's going on with the game. Kind of mad right now. Save the timeline, I know, right? What do you mean? I guess I won't help anymore. Lamar Brothers, you haven't been helping me. I already played Snoop Game. I know the lesson, okay? I shouldn't have forced anything. Let me see if this can actually work. If it'll let me skip. Okay, it does let me skip. Let's go. Skipping everything. I already know what I need to do, guys. I already played the demo once. It's just that it's different. It's different from when the demo initially happened. Guys, this is how you know I am the Rizzler, okay? I am the Rizzler. I know exactly what I'm doing. I am Sir Rizzington. 
It's the truth, you know. It's the truth. I am the Rizzler. I will riz my way through this. And through my superpower rizzing. I am a super big idiot, and I will get her a sports drink. Because I am stupid. Oh god, it's evil, Mia. Let me just skip this. Mia, I hate you. You're evil. Get sent to the Shadow Realms. Damien told me about you. There we go. Oh wait, thing I didn't mean to do that. Skip! Skibby dub, yes, 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 yes. Going so fast, guys. I'm going faster than ever. Sir Rizington himself. I am not a cheater. I did not ruin it. I just, I know, I knew it was the wrong decision. I didn't mean to click on it. Oh, actually, no, no, no. You know what the wrong decision is? Asking this man to wear a beanie. <laughs> Asking him to wear a beanie. I did not ruin it. I played Snoop Game, first run got ending four. For good reason, because I am just him. I am him, bro. It's not my fault, I'm the Rizzler. Literally, this is because, and let me tell you this right now, actually. The first thing I did in the demo, what I chose, actually, was the, it was to invite her back outside. I just want, I was curious about doing it differently this time. Because I didn't think there would be a difference. But there was. I, th I Like, this is legitimately the truth. I don't know if it's the wrong decision. I just... I actually don't know. I am not attracted to both Snoot and Gator. Lamal Brothers, I'm not cheating. I am not cheating, unironically. I am not cheating. Also, uh, that one kid on YouTube, try and not break chat. Like, break it with emotes. Do not break it with anything else. Just just put emotes, okay? Listen up. If you're going to do it, no more spamming that stuff. I think it hurts the channel. Uh, just use emotes. This is what I like. This is what I remember. No. By the way, the only reason I'm skipping this is because I already went through it in the demo. And I really enjoyed it. Like, this was the right decision, I think. That's the reason I was questioning it, because I just didn't know if I had made the right decision the first time around. And so it's the same anyways. But it's all the different because of that. Dude, this right here, this moment was so freaking terrible. Show support for Olivia. And then we'll get back to where we were before. Here it is, guys. We're back where we were before. <laughs> Bingus! I am a sigma. You know what? Let me make that a let me make that a a thing. Let me make that a thing. Am I sigma? Sigma uh sigma w riz? Do I have sigma 
W Riz or no? My first playthrough on the demo, I did choose that decision, so. Make the walk almost unseasonably warm. Man, I thought the last day of summer was weeks ago. Ha, <laughs> it was. I don't mind it staying warm longer, though. Feels pretty great to me. Maybe it gives her chair an extra hard push, letting herself glide by unaided for long enough to stretch out her arms to bask in the sunlight. I might have figured you'd like the heat. Oh, what? Because I'm a dino? Well, then she's a gator. No, it's not like that. I'm just playing. Relax. You're pretty touchy on that stuff, aren't you? The two of us finally make it to the train platform, nestled as it is off the main street. I can see the train a few blocks away, or walk timed up with its arrival perfectly. I just think it's important to be educated, is all. Even if you're what? The only human at our school? Olivia flashes me a cheeky grin as my train pulls up. I've got to admit, but her mischievous nature is a little infectious. As the train doors open, I leave Olivia with one final jab, something I know she'd appreciate. Hey, whatever you say, Hot Wheels. <laughs> I need to dodge out of the way of her slashing claws. I step, stepping smartly onto the train as the doors close. Inko, you son of a bitch. Get back here. <laughs> oh, that's cute. I can see an irate and still blushing Olivia waving her fist as the train begins to pull away. Still giggling, I manage to squeeze myself into a seat next to a yellow-scaled woman smelling faintly of hot dogs. Wait! You know, I may pay for that comment any later. Yo, is that a reference to who I think it is? That's funny. That's funny. Guys, you know what that reference is? That's a reference. That's gotta be a reference to, to the chicken snoot game. I guess this is in Volcadera Bluffs. Damn. You know, I may pay for that comment later. Yeah, you might. But the look on her face was totally worth it. Agreed. That's adorable. That's so funny! You know, I feel like this is something I noticed in Snoot Game 2 when I learned the lesson and stuff. And this is why I chose, like... Dude, I played the demo after I played Snoot Game, and I chose that decision. I just was curious. That is, I'm not cheating, by the way. I'm serious. I don't know what decisions after that will make it work, but I know that had to have been it. Because the thing about Snoot Game is, one of the biggest mistakes you can have is not allowing people to figure it out themselves. And when I took the demo, like, you'll notice the difference, and I just knew it was the mistake. I shouldn't have made that decision. I knew it was the mistaken decision. I knew it was. Because I'd already made the other one in the demo. And I don't know why I did that to myself. Like, I don't know why. Like, I just, I mean... Oh, hello, Train Master. Welcome to the stream. How you doing, man? Um, I, I just, I don't know why I did that to myself. Oh. So it's officially fall. The only thing I've really noticed was the increasing number of clouds in the sky. They're safe than sorry, though, which is why I bought my fancy compact carbon fiber um umbrella. Damn, still things have to be routine for me in the morning. This is a tough umbrella, I guess. Hello, who's there? Uh, one second. Sorry, my little brother came in. I'm back. My dog's here now, though. Cooper, who's a good boy? You want to talk, Cooper? No, he doesn't want to talk. Who's a good dog? Who's a dog? I shouldn't say his name, actually, because even though his name is that and stuff, my dog, he's a... He's a good boy. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. I'm petting him right now. Oh, my goodness. I love this dog. I love this dog. Oh, he's such a good boy. He's a big dog. He's such a good boy. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love him! You want bacon? Oh, he wants bacon. 
Bacon. He likes the bacon. He's like jerky dumb. Oh, seriously, you're not gonna eat? Okay, he doesn't like it, actually. He didn't eat it. He just dropped it on the floor. Now I'm gonna have to clean that up. Thanks, Cooper. You're such a good dog. I shouldn't say his name, but whatever. Wake up, throw up on my clothes, consider eating breakfast before realizing I'd wreck my stomach, walk to the station with a feather light umbrella in hand. Da, 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 da. Caveman can cook. Caveman and cooked? Yo, they let him cook. They cooked, bro. I'm going to play games of all time. I did not cheat, I swear. I swear I did not cheat. I just chose what I chose, what I chose in the demo, which I think was right. I think was right. And wouldn't you know it, I end up having another chat with Mr. Ferris on the ride to school. Hello, Mr. Nito, how are you this morning? Doing fine, sir. Thank you. And how are you? I'm doing well. Hmm. So many's told me over the weekend that you and Olivia were in a predicament of some sort. Oh uh, yeah, Olivia was being picked on by someone. But it's not my problem anymore. I see. Well, that's unfortunate to hear. And strange, considering the substantial funding the school gets for anti-student harassment programs. Oh, wow. What good is all that tax money if classmates are still ragging on each other? That's a good point, and I'll actually admit something that kind of saddens me is that, truth be told, I think a lot of those kinds of programs just don't work. I mean, technically, that's what the teacher should be dealing with. Like, the teachers, teachers should be the ones teaching the kids not to, like, treat each other badly. I should have chosen it from the beginning. What good is all that text money if classmates are still ragging each other? If it means anything, Olivia knows how to handle herself. I was there to support her. Oh, wow. Okay, geez. That's fine, but the issue is this sort of thing shouldn't be happening to begin with. That is a good point, Mr. Ferris. <clears throat> that aside, Liz has somewhat gotten enthusiastic, enthusiastic recently regarding Olivia. She's surprised at how animated she's gotten. My dog is being goof. This side has gone somewhat enthusiastic, really. Okay. Ever since that get together at Randall's place, oh, I heard you'd have something to do with it, huh? No, no, uh, maybe a little. Yeah, it was certainly rocky in the beginning, but we've been warming up to each other. It's nice seeing a different side of her, even if it's a brief. No, no, can I take credit for that? We all have unique chances to make a change, Inko. If you're good at grasping them, that in of itself is something to be proud of. How do you know it's really a chance to do anything? Yeah, that's a <laughs> deep reverting, reverberating, uh, ver stupid reverberating chuckle. Uh, well, I'll to flip our usual script and let you in on an old phrase. A friend of mine once told me, if you see a fork in the road, take it. He's eating the bacon! Who's a good dog? Good boy. Good boy for eating. Who's a good dog? You want more bacon? Good dog.
Sergeant Dirty Bush. What the fuck? Sergeant Dirty Bush. Inko emoji. <laughs> yeah, oh, man. Take it. Thanks, Mr. Ferris. If you see a fork in the road, take it. You think I should take the fork? Thanks, Mr. Ferris. That's different. Like my mornings, the school days have become a routine as well. Slave through PE with Damien, see Olivia's new doodles and sketches in art class, watch Liz lose her mind tutoring Damien at lunch, talk shop with Ben. Though now I have to avoid Mia like the play because she's surely out to kill me. All said, I think St. Hammond has been my best school experience out of... Man, I've lost count of how many... How often I'd moved. Must be the fresh head trauma. <laughs> As for today... Oh, sheesh. Inko, you need to become physically fit, bro. I'm sweating so much. Dang, dude, she got a bicep, bro. Her arms are almost as big as Damien's. It's been raining pretty often recently, so Coach Solly made us play more dodgeball in the gym. Mia was definitely gunning for me with the way she launched them at me with the speed of a catapult. Jeez. I was in Latikin's class, popping my spine against the curve of my chair. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, I relate to that too. Also, I hope you like glitter. No particular reason. Don't ask why. Why are you saying this, Leo? <laughs> you know what? Don't tell me. Yeah, no reason. No reason. I there. There's probably something important in that statement, isn't there? <laughs> Yo, who voted that I have no Sigma W Riz? I can't believe this. Apparently, today is a short day because of some assembly, so the period will be end much earlier than usual. It also means we've got most of the period to slack off. Do homework, do homework. I glance at the desk next to me in the hopes of catching Olivia's latest artistic masterpiece when I notice she's not drawing, you know, instead only fidgeting. Oh, hey, Olivia, you seem a bit nervous. Everything all right? Um, yeah, sorry, it's just that I... Uh-oh. I've been hearing rumors that the school's shared drive might have been corrupted. Uh-oh! Wait, really? Yeah, really. How would something like that happen? Not sure, but I'm scared that I might have missed with the art contest submissions. I think I, you should check out your entry on the website just to make sure it's okay. Technology doesn't... Technology, don't fail me now! With urgency, I take out my phone and type in the school's website. Fast fingers leave me to the art contest tab. Can this loading bar go any slower? Yeah, that's school internet for you. School Wi-Fi. Who's a good dog? He keeps coming to me. You're a good boy, Cooper. He's just a good dog. He's a good dog. Why the pitch loads in and... Oh, looks like the submissions have been closed. What? I held the phone up for Olivia to show her the page. The submissions have been closed since voting started last week. Oh, sheesh. I thought Mr. Ladigan had spooked me. Olivia's all seized up. Well, that's quite reassuring. With the submissions closed, there's no chance of any hacker messing with them. Olivia doesn't seem convinced, still drumming her fingers on her desk. Hopefully she'll feel loads better when the preliminary winners are revealed. Speaking of which, when are we... Oh, my God. Cooper's a good dog. Oh, sorry. Who's a good dog? Oh, my God. He's a good Oh, you're such a good dog. Ah. Oh my god. Oh, Cooper, stop it. You're so cute. I know. I love you, buddy. You know I love you, right? What sounds the class begins to pack their things in Latic and corrals everybody into a single file line. Alright, everybody, we have an assigned row, so stick together. Come on, boys. We gotta stick together. Sup. Hola, Protas Branco. Oh, okay, I said that wrong so badly. I said that so badly. Oh my god. Hola Maria. Que pasa? Que te pasa, Maria? Buenos dias. It was a good dog. My Spanish is terrible, I'm so sorry. It was a good dog. Even though I'm Hispanic. Even though I'm from Puerto Rico. Dog is making me pet him. Oh my goodness. Looking at me the second I stop petting him. Buddy. Oh my gosh, he's such a goober. Before I join the rest of the line, I look back at Olivia, who seems to be stalling. Oh, come on, I'll walk with you. She, that seems to stir something in her, and she glances up to me while hastily shoving a notebook into her bag. Yeah, I'm coming. 
It's okay. As we out the door, I noticed Olivia shuffling her headie a lot. It's not a long walk to the auditorium, and despite Ladikin's best attempts, most of the class splinters off to sit with their friends. Having expected this, he shrugs and makes his way over to the back of the auditorium where the other teachers are. Olivia and I are left to the struggling crowd, trying to filter in the cramped theater of the school. It's going to be difficult finding some seats. It's fine. I have a spot. Olivia wheels herself down the pathway to which I follow suit. She heads down the aisle until we are first, uh, we're at the first row of seats. Oh, wow. Okay. So we got a front row. Or is it like the... There's a vacant spot where a typical seat would be with a faded handicap sign. Olivia parks her chair into the empty stop, which I take a seat the, next, the seat next to her. Okay. Best seat in the house, right? Best seats in the house, right? Can't complain. Did you hug the gator yet? I have not quite hugged the gator yet. I will hug that gator. I will hug that gator. Aries, I will hug the gator. <laughs> Can't complain. As all fills with more students, my anticipation rises. Oh, man, I can hardly wait for the announcements. So, do you think I have a chance? Huh? Oh, maybe photography isn't super popular, but... Olivia folds her half on the lap, sitting, staring straight ahead as her voice trails off. I knew that, but I'm still hopeful. Aw, hey, guys. Ah! Liz! I have to remind myself that this is normal. Yeah, her head is here and her body is here. It is creepy. No offense to Liz. Hey, Liz. I can't believe it's finally here. Gosh, I'm so excited. Nice. Me too, by the way. Where's Damien? <laughs> He's in the back. Hey, guys! <laughs> She's fucking all the way in the back. <laughs> I'm over here! Damien is in the far back of the auditorium, yelling and waving his hands in the way to attract our attention. He's going to get into trouble for that. Frills! Sit down! Solly. Damien immediately stops and takes his seat. Damien. With tempered expectations, we both sit in silence for just a few minutes before Principal Skyler walks on stage and taps on a standing microphone. Hey, Skyler. One sec, I'll be right back. Okay, everyone. Got a whole bunch of important announcements to make. So I'll make them quick so we can all have an early lunch. Oh, my goodness. Wow, I have zero concurrent viewers right now. <laughs> I just left for like five seconds, guys. As soon as the idea of going for an early lunch is brought up by Principal Scaler, the entire room goes as silent as vigil. Damn. I guess when it comes to an early lunch, it's serious business. Over the next 15 minutes, Principal Scaler goes over and report him. <laughs> oh, jeez, the gator. <laughs> Dude, she's just dead. Oh, my God. I'm going to take a snapshot of this. Definitely. Gator. Gator moment. Lazy gator moment. Tired gator moment. Over the next 15 minutes, Principal Scaler goes over. Most of would consider starting her things like pep rallies for the sports teams. Or bake sales to fundraise for upcoming field trips, and even something about new clubs being formed, such as the Japanese animation AP Eurasian Cl Society. Okay, I can't even read. Not the best acronym if I had to say. I agree. Wait a minute. <laughs> oh, no. So, either... Oh, my gosh. G J A A P S Japs. Freaking terrible. <laughs> you know, maybe that's the way to make it good, though.
Oh my gosh. All right. Let's say the best announcement for last. St. Hammond is proud to announce the five semifinalists for the. Oh wow. Yet I'd be lying if I said it wasn't. Oh wow, I wonder. Oh, it's Damien. Aw. Aw. Yeah, see, that's a boyfriend girlfriend thing, dude. What if, what if Olivia put her own thing in? Now there's no one watching the stream. Dang. All right, we're going to start during the lunch. You all know how this goes, so no, just going for the exit. Two thirty seven, yeah, I think Olivia probably put her painting in. Mm. Damn. Oh, jeez. Oh, look. Okay, this is interesting. Acrylics. Olivia did this, didn't she? Oh my god, Olivia did this. It's got to be Olivia. That's why she doesn't want to come. Olivia, why would you do this? Yo, I'm going to confront her about this. There's no way. By the way, she's technically not a Gator, but a Baronix. 
A Boronix? Message retracted. Hey, I'm not going to check that message. Whatever you put there, you better not have put any spoilers. Prepare. I am prepared. I know for a fact. They must have... I know what must have happened. She did this. Why? I'm going to confront her. If if there is if there's ever a scene where I have to confront her on this, I'm not going to just let her slide because she needs to... You know, you can't just let that happen. That's actually wrong. All right, damn. All right. I remember Fang, All you, one of the best things you have to do is to just let her develop herself, you know? Oh. How? Mm. Oh, wow. He's starting to realize it. Oh. Oh, she doesn't want to be found. Past message. No, no. Okay, okay. 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 He's at it again. Yes, I am him. I am at it again, Doom Prophet. Mr. I can bitch 385. Bullcrap. Playing Gator Perfect Game. <sighs> ah, shush. Silence. Doom Prophet, be quiet. This man is literally just inches away from getting banned. By the way, Doom Prophet, if it's possible, could you just like periodically. I need to get a bot for the streams or something. Not a perfect game. I know, right, Leo? He's full of it. He's full of it. He's saying it's a perfect game. It's not a perfect game. It's a it's a story of 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 learning literally a learning game all right doom prophet freaking all he's he's saying it cuz he has no skibbity riz full of it he's saying it's a perfect game it's not a perfect game it's a, it's a story of of it's cuz he has no skibbity riz that's why i half hazardly check all the places where Libby could be can't find her anywhere my hunt for the baronix you said that to me Bar i keep forgetting she's a baronix Leads me to the second floor of the atrium. The gator. Feels like there's a lead brick in the pit of my soul as I internalize my current situation. The soft pattering of rain hitting the window across my to see a gloom-covered Bocaderas outside. Wow. My eyes wander along the school's pathway, covered in mud thanks to the earlier rainfall. Oh, sheesh. Wait a minute. Those look like tracks in the mud. We're going to find her. I burst through the main entrance doors, and I'm met with the feeling of droplets hitting my head. Outside, a dark overcast is rolled in. We got to find her. Follow the trails. Let's look over the desk around. Crap, what am I wasting for time for? I follow the trail with urgency. Fearing that the rain will wash it away. Looks like it goes down the whole pathway. She's trying to escape. I ignore my clothes. Oh, no. <gasps> what? Whoa. Oh, what is ha Okay, first of all, this is a beautiful drawing. And second of all, what is going on here, dude? Dude, what is actually happening right now? Like, actually, what in... Dude. A wheelchair. Dude, what? I gotta go to the gym, but I've got my eye on this sus chat. What do you mean go to the... <sighs> Yo, I, I better be prepared. Olivia's wheelchair. Oh, my God. This cruel thoughts push me into this. Oh, my gosh. What? Olivia. 
Oh no. Not on the open. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Guys. The Mob Brothers, yeah, keep your mouth shut. I got to make this choice. Oh, wow. Had no control of it. Yeah, she's actually. N this is. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's a good question. I'm not going to let her off with this. I can't. I can't just let her off. I can't. I can't do that. It's... You can't do it. You have to ask. Exactly. Aww. You can't just, you have to, th th look, I don't like pressuring. I like it to just naturally come through. But this is something that actually affects other people other than just her. You have to press it. I can't just let her, this is something in Snoop Game too. I can't just let her do this. I have to pressure her. Why'd you wonder that? It's always the same thing. Aww. In spite of your condition. This time it's a higher, shriller tone. Amazing, it's like you aren't disabled at all. Jeez, dude. I know how that feels. If all their kind words, it's always back, come back to came back to those empty platitudes. Never felt like they cared about me or my interests. It was always just because blind praise because I'm doomed to never measure up to the same level of expectations. The worst of it came when I found I couldn't even fail on my own. Oh, jeez. Aww. Aww. Almost being forced to accept these freaking accommodations. Oh. Bell rings from a distant signal and then a lunch. Good cheese. Oh. 
。哦，哇哦 ！I'm sure he's sick of it. Oh. This is just terrible. I just finished this game in this morning. I hope you get the good ending. This part is important. Don't tell me what it is. I know this is important, but oh my gosh! I know, I know, and I hate it. And I want to love them back, but I just can't. Not now. I've already wasted so much. Who am I to suddenly turn around in my last year? I want to just get out of their hair. Not waste their time anymore. Otherwise, otherwise I'll be the one hurting them, wasting all their patience. And kindness for years, like I already have, and never be in the wrong. Oh, who the hell wants to be a free eye like that? Through that, oh, and that's all I have waiting for me. Realistically, why am I telling you all this? Oh, my bitch, throws in the gun. That's why her reaction was that way. I have played Snoop Game. I actually played this. I played the demo of this game right after I finished Snoop Game. I finished. Uh, I got ending four on my first playthrough. I, I'm praying to God I get ending four on this first playthrough too. It was blind. I'm playing blind here too. The demo. I did have to go back. If you wonder, if you go earlier in the stream, I did go back in time actually because I chose a decision in the demo that I changed here out of curiosity because I didn't know if it was important. And I'm pretty sure it was, and I felt kind of stupid because it was unnecessary to change it. it. It was just me being curious, being stupid. Put a save. Oh, jeez. Oh. Oh. <laughs> it's true. Oh. Let her fail. Let her fail. It's you have to do it. You have to do it. You. I can't just let her get away with this. I can't. You can't do that. That's not the fair thing to do. I can't do that. Like I actually can't. Like that's just not the right thing to do. It's new game. Same thing. You have to let them fail. Hmm. Olivia, no. No, you have to. You have to own up to your act. My, 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 sorry, my mic just cut off. My bad. You can't just... Okay, so listen up. Listen up. 
I know for a fact that's the right decision. This is just like Snoot Game. This is a Snoot Game paradigm right here. This is a kind of situation you have to expect. Because she's literally... If you think about it thematically, too, from a story perspective, her whole thing so far has been that she doesn't want to get these handouts in life. And yet this is something she's legitimately terrified of. This is, funnily enough, this is actually really funny because if this was God, like, helping the story go through, it is, in fact, this is genius because she doesn't want to get all these passerbys by life, right? She doesn't want to get, like, all these easy freebies, right? But this is the one freebie she actually wants. But if she truly does not want all these freebies in life, she needs to face up to something like this. She can't just let this happen. Like, she just... <sighs> this is very well done. This is v very, very well done. Hmm. Hmm. I'm scared, dude. I don't want this to end badly. I'm actually scared, but I can't just... Oh, man. Isn't that a bit extreme? Honestly, it'll be then for you, too. I can't just let this go. I don't care. Oh no, Livia. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. No, I can't just let that... That means dealing with the consequences too. Don't worry, not saying good or bad. I will just pretend I know nothing. I yeah, that's very. You know what, Dutch? That's you. You know, Dutch. Dutch, listen to me. Dutch, listen to me. You are going to be my Jeremy Cricket, okay? You, don't even give me, do not give me the answer. Just, Dutch, just give me, just be my Jeremy Cricket. Be my Jeremy Cricket. Chat, be my Jeremy Cricket in general. Chat, be, chat, please guide me. But don't choose for me. Assist. Just like in Snoop Game, assist, but I have to do it. Do it in the end. It's the truth. Oh, she's just like Ben. What do you mean?
<gasps> oh, what? What? You too. <laughs> oh my god. Dude, what is this? Jeez. Oh, oh, no. He was cool. Oh, he was a secretary. Oh, he rose up the ranks. It wasn't supposed to. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't you worry. You're going to Jeremy Krimmer. We'll be the voices in your head. Leo, thank you for being one of the voices in my head. I would not want any other voices in my head but you, chat. That is it's such a terrible thing to say out loud. Oh, God. You previously you see what you chose so far. I will keep this uh, tab. Well, listen up, listen up, listen up. There are some changes, actually, with from the stream, actually. Because I went back in the demo. I don't know if I ever streamed the demo, because I think I did that personally. My choice was... The choice I've changed that I went back in the passive, which I'm not going to do again. That choice... I knew... You're welcome. That choice was personally the one I originally did. But I changed it in the streams that you've seen. That You will even notice that I didn't want that choice because I already made it. I didn't like it. I didn't know if it was important. Oh, let's go back to the stream. Oh, my gosh. The Southern Escapes are curious years of her repressed angler. Anger. Angler. Oh, my God. Even his friends started doing it, too. Like, being around me was an act of charity that made them better. He eventually told me straight up I'll give him that. Oh, wow, he just on it. Oh, wow, so he knew what he was doing. Oh, my God. Your voice shifted again, but this time instead of a voice to lampoon someone, it was an, an eerie facsimile to Ben. I'm universally down on my luck. Not even a week later, people started walking up to give praise to my submission. It was the first time in a while I'd gotten a compliment for my work. Oh, no. Dude, I've seen artists deal with this a lot. Like, you ever go on Twitter and stuff, and you actually see artists, like, posting masterpieces and crap, and they don't get a bat in an eye up until you see the person themselves, and, like, if there's anything about them, like, then you're interested? You never know. That's true. I know which ones are important. I can tell. I can sort of tell, Dutch. I can, I can sort of tell. Um, and you can check the streams. I, I Let me say this right now. Check this stream because I did go back into the past. And I went in and I, I, I changed the... You know the the one where it's inviting her outside for the dinner? I chose the decision I made in the demo recently. I changed it from what I chose in one of the older streams. Because I felt like I was doing it out of curiosity rather than what my personal feelings towards the choice were. That's what that's why I did it. Not even a week later, people start walking. Jeez. Jeez. I thought my submission was going to win. It was exciting. Until Damien showed me an article in the school newsletter written by a certain student council secretary. Half of it was basic crap about art submissions. The other half was about me. Oh, no. Oh, no. Ben had written the longest segment about the talented poor girl in the wheelchair and practically worshipped her. Surprise, surprise, it wins by a landslide. Ugh. Oh. All that effort just overshadowed for what? A safety net that I didn't earn? I really thought I was going to think of. That's the worst part. That is... Okay, let me say this right now. The worst part about these really... Like, these people... Like, no offense to Ben. Look, I'm sorry. Ben thinks that what he was doing was right. I know he does because I know people just like Ben. But what he did... <sighs> there are a lot of people like Ben in this world who really do believe that doing these things actually manipulating everything to their liking is the right decision they really do believe it they really think they're right but this is a serious thing it isn't the truth 
It's dishonesty. Doing this to her was about the worst thing he could have done. And he never thought about it that way. He took away the meaning. He made it. He got the right choice. But he took away the entire meaning behind that choice in the first place. By Because he made it go from her to him. He took away the one thing that actually made it worth it. And in this life, that is something I think people have to realize is very serious. You know, it's, it's kind of like how I've noticed, you know, there's a lot of very liberal, very left-leaning people I've spoken to. And a lot of the time, they'll talk about how, oh, it doesn't matter what you thought. Your actions are the truth. And they're right. Your actions are the truth. The actions are what, you know, doing the right thing is the important thing. But here's the thing that I think is a mistake with them. Because sometimes I think they forget that the intent behind those actions is just import, just as important. You know, first-degree murder is not the same as third-degree manslaughter. Or third-degree murder, which is manslaughter. And you know why? It's because the intent is different. It's completely different. It changes everything. And him going in here and doing what he did to ensure her the victory changes everything. Because, yeah, she won. But the way she won... And the reason for it is completely different now. Yes, the action is is that she deserved to win. Let's assume she deserved to win in the first place. That's great. But she didn't win for that reason anymore. Or at least that wasn't the main reason anymore. It was because of him. He made it go from her reason, from her being the one who was actually responsible for her painting and her worth, to him being the one. And this is my issue with all of these really left-leaning people. They believe... That their choices, whenever they do it, they're the most important. That's why they want this power. Hell, it's the reason I've gone into politics in the past. Like, getting elected, you know. But there's one thing I realized from the instant, and I think this is what every politician, every business person, every person out there needs to realize, is that you're not the only person in the world. You know, and I know that me monologuing in a room alone probably doesn't speak much to that. But this is important. I know it's not stupid. I even brought that up, but it's true. It's true. It's funny. It's ironic. But the truth of the matter is, is that you're not the only person in the world. And in politics, that is the most important thing you can learn. Because the truth of it is that it's both the, both the key to success and the key to doing the right thing. Because you need to look at the people around you, and you need to realize that they are selfish. They are insolent. Oh, God, who is it? Sorry, I'm back. I had to do something. But I was going to say, they're insolent, and they are just like you, is what I was going to say. They're just like you in that regard. And they're different at the same time. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Exactly what's... Ben Strikes is an, a very opportun... He is a very opportunistic person. He's clever. He's very smart. He's very witty. He swooped in advertiser disability as a handicap for her art. If you were in Olivia's shoes, what would you think? I would think the same way she feels. Let me say this right now. It's actually clever, because what he did... Let me say this right now. He probably did what he thought was best. He did what he would do for any friend. He gave them the insurance. Ben is literally... What Ben did was literally act as insurance for Olivia. That is actually what he did. Unironically, that is what he did. He was her insurance. And he thought what he did was the right thing. Because for a politician... Let me say this right now. You might consider it kind of a weird thing to say. You might think that that is actually bad, like when ensuring it, rigging the game. But let me say this right now. Rigging the game for what you think is right, to you, that's there's nothing wrong with that because you're making the right decision, right? But you are taking away everything from what makes that decision right in the first place. And that's the problem with this. That's what Ben did. What he did was he completely took away what actually made it all correct. Literally. That's what he did. He took away her dream. You said you changed the family dinner choice. I just watched him. He was picking, convincing her why her family needs her the first choice. My fir no, no, no. My first choice was... Initially, in the demo, it was just inviting her because I felt like I was being too forceful. Even though I believed that 
persuading her family was also a good choice. I honestly thought both decisions were actually good choices. One second, let me do something. Let me just take a screenshot. I need to do this again. One second. I honestly, and I, the original choice I made in the demo was actually just inviting her out, not persuading her that her family needs her. Because I feel like the family choice was kind of manipulative, you know what I mean? That is, that's why I changed it back to what I had in the demo, because I felt like the demo was more representative of my decision, like what I actually would have chosen. That's what I changed in this stream. That was actually what happened, if you want to know. That's actually the context of this whole thing. And I, I really do want to say that it's just depressing, because as someone myself, when you're in politics, sometimes it just feels so hard to get anything done, to persuade anyone for anything. And it is so tempting to just rig everything into your favor. There comes a time, let me put it like this, and the like when it concerns United States politics, there comes a time that you get into a political position that has so much authority and weight to some extent that it doesn't really matter whether or not there's a president or there's a Supreme Court justice. You have enough authority in the position that you have to some extent to manipulate it. Even if, like Mitch McConnell is a good example of that. And what Ben is, is he's a politician. And that's the worst thing about him. And it's sad because he's doing what he thinks is right. He's the friend. He's this is what he knows. As if I would, I would after using me as a stepping stone to call. Out. Let, let me say this right now. In his eyes, yes, he used you. He, he, let me say this right now. Ben's eyes, what he did was a kill two birds with one stone. He thought what he did with that decision was actually helping people. In two ways, he helped himself. By making this something he could like actually profit off of, like a businessman or a politician would, like a like a state official or a business official, like a corporate official would. And on the other hand, he helped her get what she needed. Like he helped ensure, even if she was already going to win, he helped ensure that she was going to win the painting contest, which gave her what she wanted. "Quote unquote," is what he probably thought. But that's not what actually happened. That's not what actually happened. What actually happened was he manipulated everything and took away the very meaning of the thing that was there. The whole point of it. He completely threw it out of the way. And that's the issue. Think about it like this. Imagine if elections always followed the quote-unquote right candidate. The candidate that was always going to actually do the quote-unquote right thing when a situation arose. Now, this is good. This is actually the whole point of what elections are supposed to be for. Because the people, the logic is that they will come in and they will decide properly. But that doesn't always happen now, does it? Democracy isn't perfect. But if you allow for the facade of democracy to exist, and for people to vote, actually, when in reality there is a preset determination for every single election, even if it is quote-unquote for the right thing, it isn't. And let me say this right now. Funnily enough, over time, that will become more and more apparent. That facade is just that. It's a facade. That's why you can't rig elections in democracy, because eventually people will legitimately come, and they will say... This is bull. They will know. They will realize it. It's completely an utter sham. And if the more you lie, the more you do that, the more you pull out of it, because in your eyes, because you are in the, the right decision, e even if you are correct, you are legitimately making an unsustainable decision that will eventually destroy everything. And you're pretty much using other people for it. Because in your eyes, you're the hero. You're the, you're the hand behind everything. And th there's nothing right about that. Interesting thought about Ben. I guess we might need some more info, but from what we know right now, it does indeed sound like a two birds with one stone uh, scenario. I agree. Needs her outside. From her view, it's like having to be out there because she should be a dick. Otherwise, just inviting her sounds more independent. Exactly. That That's actually the reason for it. That is actually why I made that decision. Unironically, that's the reason I changed it back to what I had before because I felt like, number one, I was guilt tripping her. And number two... It just wasn't what I wanted. Also, if you guys want, you can join the memberships right there if you want. Um, if you want. I couldn't take it anymore. I told him to get out of my life, and he just gave me this look. I'll never forget it. Oh, yeah, the facade goes away. Genuine confusion, like I was an alien for being accepted. Exactly. Exactly. This, Dude, this is this is exactly what a politician would look like. An act, like a real politician, like a, an, as someone who actually understands politics pretty well. 
Exactly. Because in his eyes, what he did was he gave her a gift. He ensured her outcome. And he took everything behind it. All the meaning behind it. Because it was him. Literally, that's what he did. He took it all away. All the meaning for it is gone now. Because of his decision to make it about him. To make it about something other than what it was. It's the choice. But what he said, this is your only chance. Oh, f oh, that is terrible. But that's also... <sighs> I'll give a secret right now. I've never been truly tested on it, or at least never publicly. But when I was younger, I had a lot of mental issues that doctors said I had, at least. You know, specifically autism, things of that sort. Um, you know, even emotional instabilities is what they said. And, you know, this is a while ago. You know, it never was publicly made, by the way. So, you know, technically speaking, it's not even on my record. But that's what they said. Autism especially. They said I was kind of high-functioning. And this mentality right here, you know, there's a stereotype that having autism means you can't socialize or you can't do well in a, a very social setting kind of thing. Let me say this right now. Depending on just how you are, autistically speaking, depending on how it is for you, it might actually be the opposite. Because for Ben, what he was doing was giving her the way, she, in his eyes, the only way she can actually succeed. Because she can't walk. She doesn't have the abilities other people have. For him, using this to an advantage is the way to win. Because in his eyes, there's no other way. Which is terrible. It's a, of such a false mentality. It is so untrue. And it was something I used to believe when I was a lot younger. I am somewhat of a politician myself. I make regular appearances, give speeches in my local town hall, and I see a lot of people who feel safe for playing the liberal card when it comes to people like... Absolutely. Uh, you know what, dude? You know, that. first of all, respect to you for actually going to your town hall, by the way. Respect to you for actually going to your town hall. That's more important than people realize, local politics. People don't realize that. Olivia, people would rather take the safe road rather than treating like a normal person. Exactly, dude. By the way, if you go to your town hall, if you're well known enough, I recommend that you go into a, you know, you maybe you become a part of your homeowners association or you know, maybe you become a part of a group or something. I recommend it so that you can get elected to like a like a position. You know, I really do think that you could, you know, this is just my perspective. You should you should try if you really do make regular appearances and give speeches at your local town hall, you you really ought to try and get elected. What is normal to the spider is chaos to the fly. Ben is too self-centered to see through his errors. Leo, that is a very good way of putting it. You guys, honestly, look, I have a membership that's only a dollar a month. I know that it sounds like I'm asking right now, but I honestly would like you guys to become members because you actually seem cool as hell. Like, I would not be against it. And I just want you guys to see, like, member-only posts that I'll be posting in the future. Because y'all seem legitimately cool. I'm not even kidding. Like, I want you guys to be patrons so that you can give recommendations, both of you, both Leo and Dutch. Because y'all actually seem cool as hell. This is your only chance of succeeding out there. I wanted to just give it all up. Ugh. But by then, the money, the exposure, his effing safety net. There it is. I told you. The safety net. The safety net. Exactly what it is. He literally, if you think about it, this is actually what the whole point of welfare is. I, you know, that's what this is, isn't it? That's what this is actually about. About giving... You know, this is the problem with safety nets, and this is kind of what the left-leaning thing is. You know, what they're doing in this story is Ben, in his eyes, you know, he is pretty much the uppity liberal, you know, the he's kind of like Naomi, but a lot deeper in my eyes. I think this is actually, dude, this is so well-written. This is so much better than what Naomi was, because Naomi was the same way. She was manipulative in the same way, or not in the same way. She was manipulative in a similar way, but he is so much deeper, because what Ben has done here. It's in his eye is he is giving welfare to people who in to him or lesser because he can do it to, in his view in his liberal view in his mindset he thinks that they need this or else they'll always fail to him it's like oh I could I can I don't need this because I never fail Ben doesn't fail Ben no matter what situation is thrown at him always gets the best stick out of it I know how that feels. I legitimately do. And in this modern day and age, I think someone like Ben 
is kind of the kind of person you do realize is the the new kind of I don't want to say predator, but he is the new man, like legitimately, and it's sort of disturbing to see just how that is, like how that plays out. By the sounds of it, it sounds like you're American. I live in the kingdom of the Netherlands, and we don't elect our mayors, just the council. But I would love to try and get elected one day. Really, Dutch? You know what? Your name is Dutch Chief of Ministry. I should have realized that. Kingdom of the Netherlands. That's really cool. And you have, yeah, you get a, just the council. So the mayor is the executive. That makes sense because the executive branch, it's a kingdom. That actually makes a lot of sense. The council is the legislature, though. So just like England used to do, the parliament gets elected. But not the executive branch. The executive branch is either appointed or it is effectively, uh, you know, just ordained. That's actually really cool. You know, both you and Leo are really cool. I'm legitimately serious. I want, you know, if, this is actually really nice. But by then, the money, the exposure, his effing safety net, I just took it. You know, the sad part about it is that's just it. It's too freaking nice not to. Like, why not? Even if you become a slave to it. Like, notice how she literally said, no, this is all I have left. That's what welfare is. It's all you have left because you get reliant on it. It's like opium for the masses. It's like opium for the people. It's literally once you take it, especially nowadays, because if you don't know how welfare system works, it's terrible. It's really bad. It is so manipulative because the second you try and get off of it, it like it curb stomps you. It like it wrecks your kneecaps. And I am an American, by the way. So I'm talking about the American welfare system. And other welfare systems are similar to this. The second you get reliant on it, it's so hard to get out. And for Olivia, with Ben's words probably impacting her so much alongside the fact that this is something she had. I mean, there's no incentive for her to try and do anything else, right? But the second this happens, she realizes, oh my god. Oh my god. This is actually going to be bad. Because now there goes it. And if that goes away, what can she do? What can she do? That's that's actually terrible. He was right. He was right, and I hate it. I really, really effing hate it. So that's what's between Ben and Olivia. Mm. Yeah. Free money here. Yeah, it's free money. And she didn't want it to be free. She wanted to earn it. But Ben made it about him. You know, this is what the state is like. This is why the state likes welfare. They want it to be about them. This is why corporations, huge corporations, usually, when they get big enough, stop wanting to be in a capitalist system. They don't want to compete anymore. They want to become the state. It's why you see these megalithic corporations so connected to the government. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Hybrid economics stipulates that's not entirely a bad thing. It isn't. You're right, actually. Hamilton himself even showed this through his projects, through the projects which he helped fund as the Secretary of the Treasury. He did it good, but that doesn't mean it's always going to be done well. That's the issue. Sometimes you need to realize that the thing about hybrid economics is it's just that. It's hybrid. There is a clear line, and this is what actually makes it work, and why it, it's bad when this isn't the case. There is a clear line between the government and the, and the business, and the people, pretty much. The government is for the people, by the people. But the issue is this. Sometimes that means the government needs to leave the people be. And the government hates that. And I can't blame them because it makes everything else tougher. How are you supposed to do something like, let's say, fund something that you want without, you know, getting taxpayer money? How are you supposed to effectively do these public institutions without taxpayer money? How is it without forcing the people to give you what you want? You know, if you want government to actually work well, and when I say work well, I really mean not work well, actually. If you want to get things done, even bad things, you need to make it less democratic. But that's not entirely true. See, this is why hybrid economics is so important. Because the way it does it is that the government effectively looks at the corporations, the business, it looks at the people, and it says, okay, with the resources that we have as the state, we will give you a grant. These kinds of things. That's where it comes in good. Because that investment can actually help. It can help. But that's just it. It can and it might not. Because you have to be careful when you do that. Because you might end up circumventing the entirety of the competition. Seriously. I mean, if you effectively give a company, like let's say Boeing, free stuff constantly and consistently, and you say, okay, we'll give you this, we'll give you this, we'll give you this, consistently actually, 
without being someone like Hamilton who had a very good understanding of business and economic theory as a whole overall, what ends up happening is you become, you end up creating something known as corporate welfare. Now, there are good examples of hybrid economics, like Section 936 of Puerto Rico, which they used to have, but when they got rid of it, it everything became terrible. But that made sense because of national security reasons. I, this is a complete other thing. It's a tangent. But the second you make it so that the whole thing companies do, I think that the IRS doesn't exist here. You're, that's good, Leo. That's good for you. You're lucky. But the IRS would probably still get after you if you did something. But that's just it. Poor Olivia, I know. And that's just it. The second, the second you start to give these things, you unironically make a big issue because you become reliant on it. I mean, think about it like this. How does a business properly operate when the actual profits it makes are no longer from the consumer and no longer based on what they can do for the worker, but based off of what the government can actually give them? The grants. What happens if all of your business is just that? Literally, what happens if a majority of your income comes from that? Because that completely, almost completely, at least, undermines the law of supply and demand. Because it's no longer determined by the people on whether or not, or whether or not it's actually sustainable. You know, and it's not like this is always the worst thing, but over time it becomes unsustainable. Which is why it's better to just allow it to sometimes... Like, yes, there are issues that will arise. Yes, sometimes they'll try and do some of the business. Think about it like this. In the PPF curve is what we call it. The pro production possibilities curve. Sometimes, yes, the economy will have to go into a recession. Yes, sometimes it will overachieve. And if you can, try and minimize those as much as possible. I won't deny that. That's a good thing to do. But it's inevitable because people's decisions will lead up to that. It'll happen. The biggest mistake you can do is not giving people the choice to let that happen. The only thing you can truly do is give them the context and the choice. I don't think the IRS doesn't have reach over European students, but they are 100% a scary organization, so I'm not 100% sure. Oh, yeah, they have a lot of connections to Europe, dude. It's been that way for years. Uh, IRS would absolutely go after you if you have any... Like, if you have, like, $5 in the United States, bro, they, they're, they're watching you. <laughs> So that's what's between Ben and Olivia. I figured it was something, but sheesh, yeah. After that, I just couldn't. I shut everything out. Everyone out. Everyone was fake. Everyone didn't want to know me. Just that, what I exist as. Even my own family. That's just terrible. I totally understand that feeling, though. Oh, my God. Hell, it's all his fault. All of it. Is it, though? I mean, you took it in the end. Well? Well, what? That's it. That's the truth. I just want to graduate and get away from here, from him. He ruined my life. <sighs> Olivia. It's not that simple. Because of him, I'm not Olivia. I'm Olivia, this, the poor, sad cripple. That title is forever fixed to my name. Come on, that's not true. You're right, it's not. You're Olivia. No, that's also not it. I'm, all, I'm not Olivia. I'm God's funniest joke. A gator with legs that don't work. It's kind of funny, I guess. I nudge the umbrella back over to us. It goes back into its spot propped between us, recreating the canopy, shielding us from the elements. Olivia looks to me to gauge my reaction. That was the sort of speech given by someone that's had it years to think about it and hold it in. And it's one she's been waiting to give to anyone willing to listen, even if she if she could just trust them. All of her pent-up angst against the guy that ruined her life. Or at least at the moment, she just couldn't take it anymore. I can't get much worse than this for her. But she trusts me. What she needs to hear right now is... No, no, no. This is important. You can still take back the reins of your life and own your mistakes. Dude, this is such an obvious choice. This is such an obvious choice. This is such an obvious choice. That's not hard at all. That's such an obvious choice. It's not me. It's her. She needs to fix herself. I always take the enlightened centrist route. I think centrism is the correct route. If you look at Nicomachean ethics, that's literally the whole point of it, isn't it? Like where there's, the, where there's half hazardousness and there's cowardice and then there's bravery or courage that's that's literally dutch that is literally what it is i always take the enlightened centrist route the people must be free to sell and buy to create their businesses until a certain point where they become too big and need government intervention you know what that's a good point it depends but absolutely pretty much to some extent to prevent monopolies and corporate political influence 
let me say this right now. You need to be careful about preventing monopoly, monopolies because depending on the situation, you might actually want to just allow monopolies to operate unless they put, unless they go to a certain position where it's a mistake. Because certain monopolies, you need to realize that... And this is why Theodore Roosevelt uh, actually went against Taft, if you didn't know why the Bull Moose Party became a thing. It's a funny story. It's because he didn't like Taft continuing destroying certain monopolies because they were doing nothing wrong. And that's the actual thing you need to wonder. Sometimes you need to get rid of monopolies. You need to break them up so that the um, so that influence is no longer the thing. If they are not doing sustainable business practice, if they are doing bad things, I can understand it. But to go as far as Taft, who was literally just creating chaos in the markets artificially, that is a huge mistake. I mean, look at the difference between what happened with Walmart and Amazon. Walmart was thought to be a monopoly. No one could compete with them until someone innovated and made a completely new market and Amazon came through it. So I would be careful with it. But you're right. Eventually, I think that certain, you know, eventually you do need to do that. Eventually, but you need to be careful. Olivia seems to think Ben is the source of all her problems. The state she is in right now in the absence of her social life. I agree. And I think that I think she's making a mistake because he's not. She's giving him more power than he needs, which is pretty political. That's actually a pretty funny politician thing to do. That's the whole point of politicians, you know. I take my sunglasses off and lean forward, placing a hand on her shoulder. She takes a moment to register the new site and looks right at me, anticipating whether, whatever I'm about to say. You're not a joke, Olivia. I appreciate you trying it all, but it doesn't matter. The damage has been done. All that shit is what made me into a nihilist. Okay, edgy nihilist gator. Okay, Rick. Okay, Nietzsche. Okay, Schopenhauer. I wouldn't say you're a nihilist, Olivia. Plus, I don't think that's what the word means. You still enjoy th some things. Got a better word? Well, there you go. That's besides the point. Ben did something horrible, he, but he didn't take your agency. Are you saying that I ruined my own life? Is that it? Annoyance bubbles up with me as she argues back. It is a little annoying, but I can understand her statement. She wanted to get caught in the act. Yet Olivia looks at me as if I just spat in her face. See? That's, that's her fault. She chose to do that. That's not my fault. You did that. It's your fault. Don't you dare do this. Just because you're crippled doesn't mean I'm going to let you get away with that, you cripple. Cripple? It's the truth. Just what the hell are you getting at, Inko? What am I getting at? The fact that you can't keep using Ben's shitty choices as a crutch. Her breath catches. You need to take responsibility for your own life, who you are, and what you want to be. That's true. I can't do this for you. Olivia, I am literally not you. I am not just going to let you get away with this. And number two, I can't just do that. Because the truth of the matter is, I'm not you. I can't fix your problems. Only you can fix your problems. Or truth, for the most part. Like, it, it, you know, this is why I dislike a lot of intellectuals and a lot of doctors and stuff I've met. And when I say doctors, I really just mean a lot of very left-leaning people who are usually in academic professions. Because the whole point of what they do, and what they want to do, I should say, is they want to fix everyone else's problems. But they don't think about the fact that sometimes they have to fix their problems. And I think a lot of doctors are super duper overpaid. And they never want to admit that that's a part of the problem as well. Not to say that's the only thing. There's other things too, of course. You know, hospital business people, like people who are in the hospital business are terrible. The hospice industry, because they are literally putting prices so high, actually. Because in their eyes, you know, funnily enough, they're the same as the doctor. Let me say this right now. Let me say this right now. It is funny to think that they have the same reasoning as doctors, even though doctors, we separate them from them. The funny thing about it is that they actually have the same reasoning. The fact, In fact, the reason that they raise prices so high, if you actually think about it from a market perspective, the reason they do that is because they know. They literally think the same way the doctors do. That they are so important because their whole mission, their whole point of the industry is to help other people when they can't help themselves as easily. That is the whole point of their industry. And they know that. Olivia can't stand Ben. She should stand up for herself. Otherwise, Ben will walk all over her. But is it better than that she takes this first step or that we stand in to defend her? Sorry, I had to. Dutch, you're literally like Mia. Shut up, Leo. Nefarious behavior. Obviously, she should stand up for herself. Like, it can't be me. I shouldn't be the one doing it. Like, she's got to do it, man. I can't do it, man. Nefarious behavior. <laughs> Look, Leo and Dutch, you're both pretty cool. Don't hate on each other. Come on. 
You need to take responsibility for your own love, who you are and what you want to be. My words catch Olivia off guard. It's true. And they kept coming unbidden now. This is what my mom's told me before. You say that you're a nihilist. You know what? Let me say this right now. The best decisions in my own life are usually the ones I've actually made by myself without anyone else coming in. Like, honestly, Ben kind of reminds me of my mom, unironically. Which makes sense because she's an HR manager, so, yeah. Yet you draw these amazing pieces that reflect these realistic fantasy worlds. And you say that no one wants to know you for you. But you know you have the pains, Latican, Liz, me. Can you really blame any of that on Ben? Even the art contest. Ben didn't yank some evil string of fate and make you swap out the submission. You made yourself do it. I know it's hard. I have trouble with this too, but... Please, for all of us, take responsibility for your feelings, Olivia. Exactly. Oh, shit. Damn it, my mouth. I tired as left Olivia staring at me. Mouth hung open and guessed at what I had said. I had some realization and tried to backtrack. Sorry, that was... Oh. F you. And she glares at me. My eyes are hurt when they're enraged. They're looking for something to lash out at. But they're trusting. F you for being right. I am a Giga Chad. I am a literal Sigma male. I have W Riz. I have W Riz. Whether or not these 12 voters care, I have W Riz. I just, but joking tone doesn't go through that text as easily. Leo. <laughs> but yeah, wow. I know all that, damn it. And you're the second to say it. Oh, the second. So does that mean Latican said it? I mean, it's Mia the one who said it. Her eyes water and her head, and her head returns to my shoulder. Aw, damn it. Damn it all, Inko. Aw, let me let me take a screenshot. I'll make this the thumbnail. I think I think I should make this the thumbnail. Saddest gator ever. Saddest gator ever on stream, guys. Saddest gator moment ever. Moment ever. Oh my gosh, guys, this is actually terrible. I feel so bad. Oh my gosh. Technically, if Olivia can walk somewhere. Wait, don't, 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 what? Don't freaking spoil! Damn it, damn it all, Inko. Don't spoil! She can walk? Oh, that makes sense, because she could walk from the. from the thing. That's, that's how she got here. Alex, Alex, no, 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 Alex, it's okay. Alex, no, don't ban anyone, don't do nothing, okay? Technically, Olivia can walk somewhat. Not sure you know, uh, you knew, but Olivia is still paralyzed below the knees. Yes, her thighs still work, so she can sort of waddle over the floor. Oh, well, I knew that. That's from, you could tell. I'm stunned as she presses further against so her, even using her arms to tuck her legs closer. You and Latican and fine. You're right. Okay, so Latican is the one who told her this, actually. It's kind of funny, because Mia sort of says this too, but she says it in a really mean way, in a really bad way. But Latican makes sense. You're right, but... How do I start? I have no idea what I should do. Her voice sounds so weak, but there's conviction hidden within it. Honestly, she should have just mauled me for what I said. Yeah, pretty much. I agree. It's kind of mean. But it's true. It's what she wants. I can do this. Well, hmm. What do you think is wrong right now? You'll have to be more specific. All right. What about Damien and his family? She comes in thought. And then there's those two. All of them would probably like to hear your thoughts. Yeah. What would I say, though? Hell, just being more open in general would be something. I can feel her frowning, but also nod against my shoulder. Fine, what else? Mr. Latican? She scoffs. He probably already knows. What you're thinking? Yeah, he reads me like a book. But he'd probably like to hear you say it. That is true. It's just because someone knows it doesn't mean, like, you should... It's not a spoiler. It's true. It isn't a spoiler because it's already happened. But it's true. It's so true. Like, you should actually... It, it's more important. Just because someone knows it, you, to hear it from your mouth is more important. Because this is the kind of speech that matters. Because it's an action. It is an action to say something like that. That's why That's why good dialogue in movies and stuff, the important thing you do, in comics included, is there's an actual reason behind the words being said. Sometimes action is not always words. Sometimes it's moving. But sometimes it is words. And the best kind of dialogue is when it is action. When someone is talking and there's reason behind the words they say. It's very important. Yeah, he would. He would. And? And me too. 
You got your turn. You told me just now, but I'd like to hear more about you. You're my friend. I'm all right. Oh, <laughs> it's so cute. Starting now, I can feel her rumbling growl before she says, I'm sorry, Inko, for all that I put you through since you got here, for being a really bad friend, for you having to put up with me. Don't. I chose to be your friend, Olivia, so don't apologize for that. That is true. Let me say this right now. Something I hate, something I hate is when people say, I'm so sorry for you having to be my friend. Don't say having. I choose to be someone's friend. Just as I choose not to be. You know, I remember the scene in The Office. One of my favorite scenes ever is when uh, there's this fat black guy in The Office. And he hates Michael. I forgot his name. He's kind of a lazy bum. He sucks as an employee. But he dislikes Michael. And Michael gets really emotional at one point. Because he just really wants him to be liked. He just wants to be... He wants him to like him. And he says, is there anything I can do? And he says, look, I don't know. You know, he says, really, he says, no. And not to say that he can't, actually. He probably could. But that would be meaning to not be who he is. Like, who Michael is, actually, as a person. And truth be told, it is acknowledging that and saying it out loud rather than being some doofus goobus. Inko is a good human being. Yes, he is. Cave Manon cooked. He did. Cave Manon did. Sorry if it sounded like spoilers, but I just wanted to make you sure you understood her condition fully. The game doesn't fully explain it a lot. It caused me a lot of confusion. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, well it's kind of obvious if you go into the if you go into the the swimming part. Remember in the early of the game, don't spoil it, but remember that because it does say that maybe just her legs, like knees down, don't work. It's kind of it kind of shows it. I'm happy he didn't start out like Anon. Yeah, he is different. Anon became better, but. Well, I think, actually, I think Anon was someone who went down the wrong path in a previous school. And then it's the story of him becoming a better person back to that. Which is kind of cool. Inko is already somewhat of a good person. And this is a story as to whether or not he actually fully develops as that. Or else. Olivia looks up at me through the corner of her eye. Ben can't take your agency, but you can't take mine. Yeah, I choose. I choose to be my to be a friend of yours or not. I don't have to be your friend. I can choose to say no, even if there are ramifications for that. I'm true. That's correct. I've actually had conversations like this before. You're silly. I'm silly, huh? Her words are strained and not from lack of water. The regret in her voice was raw, along with the honesty. Thanks. And I forgive you. And once again, silence. Exactly, and I choose to forgive you or not. I fumble with my sunglasses, debating whether I should bother with them, given the rain. Might as well. I guess they are prescription after all. Which You know, this is why God... Let me say this right now. In the Bible, this is why God is such a big deal, actually. Because his whole thing is that he chooses to forgive his children for all of the bad that we've done. For all of the sins. All of this. All of the evil. It is always a choice. The Lord doesn't need to forgive us. Like, the whole point of Jesus coming back in the Bible is literally that he doesn't have to do it. He doesn't have to. Technically, even though there is a covenant, none of it was necessary. He could just abandon us, and we'd be deserving of it. But he doesn't. For all the evil we've done, he's still there. Ingo is the Discord user, and Anon is the 4chan user. Oh my gosh. I'm currently playing Snoot Game. I'm still very... Oh, oh, I'm not going to spoil it. I know all the endings. I just never saw the story. I'm loving it so far. Snoot Game is a great game. Everyone listen to me right now. Y'all should check out Snoot Game if you like this game. And to compare it with this game after the fact is awesome. Indeed. I've played Snoot Game first, like, in vice versa. I've played Snoot Game myself. Never played uh, I Want to Hug That Gator until now. Imagine if Inko and Anon were related. I don't know. They have they both have an unrelated middle name. That would be funny. That would be funny if they're, like, cousins. I love Jesus. I love you. Yes, I... You know, that's good. Me too. Me too. Me too, bro. I think. I, I really should go to church more. We just lay back, listening to the patter of rain against our little tent. Just her and I, secluded from the world that sent so much to crush her. Man, she's really leaning back against me. I crane my neck so I can turn and look at her. She looks so at peace now, even with the smeared mascara and white, wet hair. I'm starting to lose feeling in my arm, though. <laughs> and watching her like this is... Snork. Was that a snore? Oh, she's sleeping? I guess she would be pretty tired. It's been a long day for both of us, even if it's only fourth period. Did I do all right? Things turn out pretty okay, but I'm anxious. The best I can do is be there for her. In this case, it's letting her have my shoulder for a bit. Press up against me. My eyes slide closed, and I try to lose myself in the pitter-patter of the rainfall. Hmm? Oh. Oh my god. 
Olivia jerks herself up and starts coughing into her fist. F, I, uh, how long? About five minutes, probably. Jeez, sorry. You know, I remember when you got up to me for just sitting near you back at the party. Shut up. Looks like, looks like you're improving a bit. Olivia bonks the umbrella, making it splash a bit on me. Hey! Anyway, Olivia stretches her arms. Things go quiet again. Olivia finally breaks the silence. I know you say you forgive me and all, but I still feel like ass for putting you through all this. Now everyone's going to expect you to be skilled at painting. They'll call you a fraud. Oh, yeah, I was trying not to think about it. Damn, it's all my fault. I literally rest her arms over her, knees, over her knees, and I'm surprised she managed to bury her long snout in them. An idea hits me. What if you taught me for real? <gasps> Olivia raises her head from her arms. Ooh, that's genius! That's big brain! That's big brain! That is big... That's so smart! If he becomes that good, then no one's gonna even care. Taught you. Painting for real. It's like you say, I have expectations to fulfill. Would you teach me how to paint like you do? I don't know. I'll tell you what, I'll forgive you if you teach me. You already said that. <laughs> yeah, it's true, you kinda already said you forgave her. But, I mean, the forgiveness can be retracted if she's not willing. Olivia looks down in contemplation. Alright, I'll teach you how to paint. There we go, but you should know, I'm a lousy teacher. You see my working class, I'm a lousy student. I got a feeling it'd work out. Wow. Hey, don't make it weird. Yes, Professor Alfred. <laughs> Stop making it weird! I chuckle as I'm playfully shoved by her. After that, every, after everything was said and done, things became quiet. Dude, this is so good. This is so freaking good. This is giving me Snoop Game vibes already, bro. It's so good. I felt a little longer in certain parts, but that's probably... Let me say this right now. It's probably because I already played the demo, and before this portion, it's all the same almost. And I, I feel like that's the reason it felt a little less on me, because I already, I already got really pumped up from the demo. I should have streamed that. Beneath the solace of my umbrella, we relaxed together. At least until Olivia begins shifting uncomfortably. I sit and watch as she takes her cows and shifts them to her side with one hand. Her tail comes around and presses into the paper filled floor before her, keeping her upright as she starts to lean forward. Finally, with the strength of her tail in one arm, Olivia lifts her hips from the floor and swings her shins fully beneath her. She smiles as she kneels over me. You're just going to sit there? Crap, I guess I was gawking stupidly. But it's just so fascinating seeing the girl maneuver herself in these odd yet well-practiced ways. Yeah, hey, you know what? That's that's experience. I'm kind of jealous, actually. I wish I had a tail to do some of the things she could. Inko, shut up. You're not a furry. I press my hands down on the floor and push myself up. I don't know why I'd, I had thought to stand, but instead I shifted myself to a kneeling position, too. We're face to face now. Oh! Hug! Hug moment! Hug moment! Hug! Oh my gosh, guys. How long is the demo, actually? Six hours. Yeah, pretty much. Unironically, it is long. It's funny, I myself am a, am a Asatrust, reforms Norse mythology, paganism, ew, cringe, our gods guide us and show us how to better ourselves, but they want us that, but they want us that we walk that path our own, independence is important in my religion, well that's good for you, I love this game, thanks caveman, and I know right Alex, caveman is epic, let me say this right now, Look, I respect your beliefs, Dutch. You finally got to hug the gator. I got to hug the gator! I got to hug the gator! I hugged the gator! Oh my gosh, guys! Guys, I gotta actually... You know what? This has got to be the thumbnail now. I gotta thumbnail this, actually. I hugged the... We technically hugged the gator before, if you think about it. But this is the real hug the gator. I got to hug the gator! I got to hug the gator! I hugged the gator, guys! Oh my gosh, guys. I actually hugged the gator. Oh my lord. I hugged the gator, guys. Oh my gosh. Oh my gourd. Guys, we actually hugged that gator. No freaking way. Hugged that gator. No way. I can't believe this. I wanted to hug the gator, and we're hugging the gator. Guys, we're actually hugging the gator. I can't believe this. I can't believe this. Holy morally. Hugged the gator. I can't believe this. I can't freaking believe this. Hug that gator. We hug. I have Sigma Riz. I got W Riz, guys. Oh my gosh, we hugged the gator. For a split second, I feared the worst as Olivia drew me into a hug. I don't know what she would do, but this? I like this. Yes, I like the hug as well. For how strong her arms are, they, now they're wrapped around my chest, feels exceptionally tender. She's got some strong arms. My own arms have enveloped her, returning the embrace in a similarly soft way. I want to see her have an arm wrestle contest with Mia. That would be fun. 
And as her arms loosened, I draw back, though I don't want to take my hands off her. That was nice. Don't make it weird. <clears throat> Sorry about that. <laughs> to the sound of rainfall hitting the umbrella, my ears suddenly perk up. The noise of what sounds like squeaking? I look down and see that there's something shuffling in Olivia's pocket. <gasps> a little beast emerges from its hiding spot with a squeaky yawn to which Olivia offers her best hand for it to use as a platform. Hey, little guy, I nearly forgot about you. Had a nice nap? That's a rat. Oh, right, you two haven't met each other, Inko. This is Guts. Dude, this is the rat she's been drawing, guys! Dude, it's Pizza Tower Rat. Pizza Tower Rat, guys. Oh, my gosh. It's Bingus. Bingus Rat. Bingus. Oh, my gosh, guys. It's... It's the Rat Lord. It's the Rat Lord. It's the... It's actually the Rat Lord. I can't freaking believe this. I gotta take a screenshot of this. No freaking way. It's the Rat Lord. Guys, tell me right now if you like the Rat Lord. Oh, my lord. It's actually the Rat Lord. I can't believe this. Rat Lord. No freaking way. It's Guts the Rat Lord. It's Guts. Guts meet Ingo. Oh, uh, hi, Guts. He better not nibble my fingers off. Awkwardly wave at the apprehensive-looking rodent. <laughs> oh, she's so cute. Olivia lifts Guts to her shoulder gracefully like her hand is an elevator for him. You brought him to school? Well, yeah, I just really need him to say since, you know, all the crap that happened. Oh, this is... Aww. She gives Guts a few scritches under his chin. This is so well written, bro. This is such a good introduction. Oh, my gosh. Meet Guts. A, 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 forces. A, 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 forces. Meet Guts, man. I'm meeting Guts. I bring him sometimes when things get rough. And nobody noticed. You haven't. Touche. That's true. Laddikin did. Once. He just told me to not let him run around the school. Otherwise, it would be considered a health hazard or something. That's true, he's a rat. The tardy bell rings out in the distance. We're late for our next classes. I'm sure Latikin will understand. We should probably get back to class. Here, hold this. I give Olivia the umbrella so she can she and the rat can stay dry while I go fetch the wheelchair. Oh, it's probably really wet. Yeah. After dusting off the dirt and pooling water the best I can, I make my way back. Thanks. She offers her umbrella back, but I make sure to hold it above her. They keep the wheelchair steady with one hand as Olivia climbs into the seat using her tail to help herself up. <gasps> oh! Gator! Oh my god, the position, guys. Oh, and I'm... Oh my gosh. Gator pose. Gator pose. Guys, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, guys. It's gatored. It's gator time. Guys, it's actually gator time. Gator push. I can't believe this, guys. It's gator. Gator. Rats, rats, we're the rats. We stalk at night, we pray at night, we're the rats. I'm the giant rat that makes all of the rules. Let's see what kind of trouble we can get ourselves into. <laughs> the first time I learned he was named Guts, all I could think was Berserk. I know, that's literally what I'm thinking right now. We stand in the rain in silence for a moment, only sharing content glances. So what do we do about the contest now? That's a good question. But was there... Ben was there when I saw my name painting. He already went to tell someone. So like you said, no harm, no foul. What about your own submission? I ruined it. I scratched the back of my head. I don't know. I feel like... I don't know. It wouldn't have won anyway. It's just a picture. Oh. That's some character development right there. I thought it was pretty okay. Hearing those words from Olivia sends a strange flash of heat to my face. It's not unpleasant. But again, those honest words from her really do cut through me for some reason. That's called being... It's called blushing, bro. Thanks. A loud squeak draws my eyes to Guts as he stands on top of Olivia's shoulder. Uh, you too, Guts. Her eye smile <laughs> stretches across Olivia's face. Hmm, I think it means Guts is actually sa is saying it's actually so-so. Hey! Cut him some slack, Guts. Inko didn't have any time to make anything for the contest. He's got some high standards. Yep, it's why I've gotten so good. <laughs> the sheer absurdity of it. Oh my gosh, the rat, bro. I don't know which of us broke first when our laughter fills the air. Heard <laughs> only by us as <laughs> rainfall cuts off all the other noises. So, uh, now what? I don't know. I don't want to go yet. I'm still pretty worn out. Worn out. Smile crosses my fist as a wicked idea comes to mind. Well, too bad. What? I walk around behind Olivia, grinning like a mad idiot. Oh, he's taking control. Inko, what are you doing? Inko? Inko? Her head tries to follow me as I stand right behind her chair. I figure that pushing your chair around is really tiring, so how about I help you out? Olivia blushes and looks away. Fine, but just for today. Oh my gosh, bro. Dude, this is so... Oh my god. <laughs> Returning to the campus was certainly awkward. Passerby shoots us looks. It's not that... It's it's not the most common scene to see a girl in a wheelchair just roll on and sopping wet and tracking mud in. 
more likely though, it was because said girl had taken to using my umbrella to hide herself from those looks. <laughs> That's cute. Oh my god, bro. You know, even though I have no Valentines, this is a nice Valentines. <laughs> this is actually great. This is really nice. I'm not even joking, guys. Man, I can't believe this. More likely, though, it was because said girl had taken to using my umbrella to hide herself from those looks. Oh my gosh, I said the same thing. She was already extremely red in her face. It was a conundrum dropping the umbrella and letting people see her. Or keep it up and draw more attention. Hmm, I shall name it the Nito Theorem. <laughs> oh my god. She's gonna kill me if I ever attempt to publish it. Yeah, I'm gonna publish that as the Gator Theorem. But making our way back to Olivia's current class, she simply shook her still concealed head. I didn't really have much of a choice. From all that I knew, most of the girl, her last... For all, from all that I knew of the girl, her last classes were all in the upper levels. And she was in position of the elevator key. And I was in position of the weakest knees here in St. Hammond, at least according to Coach Sully. So I wheeled her to my current photography class. On the way over, she keeps bending her head back to peek at me. Like she's making sure I'm still there. Knocking on his closed door, Pterosaur Professor didn't even bat an eye at the poorly hidden girl. He simply stepped aside and let us through. Ben was looking our way, but I chose to pay him no mind. <sighs> ben. Dude, I don't think Ben is a bad person, but he needs to... <sighs> I know... I don't want... I don't know if I want him to have the Naomi treatment. I feel like someone like him could learn. I think. I just... Then again, it's hard for someone like him to learn. Because, like, he thinks he's already right. To him, he thinks he's right. You know? You know what I mean, guys? Like, legitimately, I think he really believes he's already correct. Also, join the memberships if you, if you can. It really helps the channel. If you haven't already. It really helps. Just one dollar. Just 99 cents, guys. It's a month. Always helps. You know, I, I just feel like it's crazy to think how far some people are willing to just manipulate everything. I've seen it myself. It's... After everything I heard, Olivia didn't even register he was here. She simply rolled herself to the back of the classroom and threw a door into what I'd always guessed was Latican's supply closet. You know what? I'm an idiot. It's a dark room, isn't it? The stares of my other classmates abated, thankfully, as their teacher continued his lecture. Taking my own seat, I focused on Latikin. As much as I could, at least, my muddled thoughts kept me distracted the whole period. Just before the bell rings, Latikin stares me dead in the eye. He points a stern finger directly at me, then to the floor to signal, You, stay. <laughs> okay, jeez. Uh-oh. I wish Olivia was real. My delusion. Don't, Leo! Get a real girlfriend! Leo! Leo! Get a real girlfriend! Then again, I will, you know what I'll do? I will post all of the screenshots I have on my memberships. I will post all of the screenshots I've been taking on my memberships if any of you want to go in and download them. As a, as a thing, as an access you get. You get access to membership posts. Just $1 a month and you'll get access to those every month. Consistently. And you'll get a, access to like, you know, you'll get the ability to do membership polls as well. It'll be a big deal. Once everyone else has left, he closes the class door and locks it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, is this gonna be... Oh, no. Uh-oh. Oh, jeez. Oh, she left after two years? Leo, no! Leo! <laughs> okay, look, Leo. There's, there's other fish in the sea, buddy. Oh, no. Leo, buddy. <laughs> I'm so sorry. So, care to explain? All the mud? Explain, sir. He opens the door on the back and signals Olivia to come out and out. The mud, the drenched clothes, the declaration of sanctuary. I was having a bad day. She's looking a bit better, still drained, but she's not serving. Her rat sits on her lap, and Latikin extends a finger down and scratches its chin. Oh, the rat. I can see that. He takes a seat against a nearby desk and waves a hand for Olivia to go on. When she doesn't, he shifts his hand to me. I look between the two of them. Mr. Latikin's expectant leer and Olivia's pleading eyes. Ultimately, I shake my head in the negative. I just helped Olivia get out of the rain. Of course. He slashes further atop the disc. Can I tell you some other time? Sure. Whatever it was, it looks like you've recovered pretty well. 
Olivia doesn't answer verbally, instead giving him a bashful smile and nod. Was it about your work again? Oh, yeah. Oh, this girl. He turns to me and points a thumb at her. You know, the work she's so concerned about absolutely wrecks the grading curve in my class. Oh, that's funny. That's actually funny as hell. If you ever wished Olivia was real, then I have this advice for you. Invasion, envision her real. Like, real, live, real, and suddenly it's a lot less cute than the animated one. <laughs> like an actual gator. Yeah, it does. it's not as cool. Dutch, alligators are my favorite animals. I like... You know, if I were to show my face... If I were to actually show you guys... If you didn't know, I have an actual gator head in my room as we speak. I have, like, an actual, like, stuffed gator. Look at how derpy those prehistoric killing machines look. <laughs> you guys should join the memberships. I'm serious. I love them. You love them? Is, is that a fetish love, or is it, like, a, I really like their cool design? You got, dude, I'm sorry. I got to keep asking y'all to join the memberships. I really want y'all to be members. Y'all are actually cool as hell. Like, I'm not even joking. You know the work she's so concerned about, right? <laughs> For the sake of the other students, I had to put a limit on extra credit assignments. Oh! You know, I actually really like extra credit. But rarely, classes these days, you know, as you go on, there, there's not that many left. I I've noticed. Really? Yeah, never before would I even consider such a restraint. Why punish someone for working too hard, I would think to myself. Then four years ago, this little green goblin comes rolling into my class. Half a semester, and more than a few angry calls from parents later, my hands were tied. Oh, wow. Jeez. That's actually phenomenal. Like, the fact she was able to do that to the point which other students were like, dude, we can't even do this. Holy crap. Young lady simply does too dang much. <laughs> Olivia smiles, but doesn't look up from her pet. It was that much better than all the other students? Well, no, I don't grade by technique. If I did, if I did you'd be in big trouble, Inko. Olivia's work was very good even then, but the main thing I admire is how motivated she can be. I haven't seen someone so enthused to just paint in years. Certainly haven't seen anyone so enthused I had to change the rules like that. <laughs> you were worried it'd stop me. Was I? That definitely sounds like me, but it didn't stop you. Not even a little. Heck, that year even got me to see some things differently. I don't think I ever did anything like that. You did when you came in after the class on Monday. Oh, I'm sorry, on Friday before Mother's Day. Take a look at this. I'm handed the quill pen, and the first thing I note about it is how soft the feather portion is. It's the special pen you always use. It's actually from my wife. Wow. Inspecting it closer, I can see more of the intricate details. Oh, it's from his wife. Like, it's actually from her wings. From the faded engravings on the shank to the maintained but worn point. It's well made and kept, and yet the feather and brass showed its age. She came in that afternoon with a whole stack of crumbled painting drafts, so frustrated she couldn't get it right and so determined to make it perfect. I say any of these would be great. Your aunt would love any of these. And she fires back. If it's not good enough for me, why would it be good enough for any someone I love? <laughs> I did not have an answer. You know, can I tell you guys a secret? I have this friend of mine who's a girl, and she's working. You know, she's in a really bad spot right now, and her family is not very good. But she works with me on this comic project that we've been doing. She's such a good artist. Such a good artist. But she barely ever gives me anything, because every time she tries to draw, she's super stressed out about it and she never feels like it's good enough and i keep telling her it's better to just give me something that you have because at least it's something rather than nothing and she's always like i just i hate it i hate it and i always wonder why do you think this is why like is this actually what it is that's keeping her from doing it is it because she legitimately wants the people around her she, who she loves and really likes like, she just doesn't feel like it's good enough because it's not good enough for her. Do you think that's what it is? I hope she's okay. She's in a tough spot right now. That's every artist. It's every good artist. Leo, really? You draw? You know, I want to share my Discord with you. I mean, I'm going to share my Discord thing with you. Let me just give you my Discord. I'm going to put that in the chat. I don't like giving chats and stuff, but let me give you a... 
add a friend. How do I do that? Add a friend. You have a Discord? Let me actually see this. One second. How do I do that to myself? How do I find my thing? Here it is. Here's my user ID. You do graphic design. You know, my cousin does graphic design. She does graphic design too. Here's my Discord ID. If anyone wants to friend me, there it is right there. There's my Discord ID. Send me a friend request if you have Discord. I know a lot of artists like using Discord for professional reasons. You guys are really cool. Y'all are really nice. I like you. This chat's really nice. I'm serious. Dutch, Leo. All right. Yeah, I do. Yep, I had a feeling. Anyway, it's midnight for me and time to go to sleep. Have a good stream. You too, Dutch. Dutch, please don't forget to come back for the next stream. I know it sounds stupid because that's my whole thing, but I really would like it if you guys could continue. I really would like to see you all again. I'm very serious. It would be very nice. Good night. Good night to you, Dutch. It really means a lot to me. I'm serious. You guys don't even know it. Steve Harvey sleep. You know? Let's go back to the game. I did not have an answer. So I tell her to take a step back. We take a few hours to go over fundamentals once more. I send her home to try getting it right over the weekend. And come Monday, she returns and hugs me first thing. That Friday night, though, what she'd said was on my mind. I talked about it all night with my wife. Then that morning, I decided to make a change for myself. My, my, my wife was molting at the time, so there was always a new feather or three in our blankets each morning. Ah, I took the biggest one, preserved it right, got a bit of help to make it into a real pen, and I've used it ever since. <laughs> Look at that. It helps me remember to do my job right for the, keep, for the people I care about and for the people my students care about. I think what it was, it's that childlike reasoning that comes so naturally for the youth. That reasoning, it makes a type of innocent yet earnest dis dedication, something I think I lost for a while. Don't give me so much credit. You haven't lost it, have you? Good. Don't lose it for me, okay? Okay. <laughs> Latican yawns and stretches. I would too after a speech like that. You feeling all right to go to your next class? Yes, I'm ready. Great. He claps a hand over my back. We should do this again sometime. <laughs> Mr. Latikin ushers, uh, ushers us out of his classroom as the late bell trills, handing us, handing us a note he'd rapidly scrawled on. Miss Prockling didn't seem enthused to see us come in late, but sighed as she read the late note from, from Latikin. As I took my usual spot, I felt something odd in the corner of my eye. Looking up, it was to see Olivia looking my way, with that smile on her face, one that spoke so many words that I couldn't figure out what. All I could do in turn was to try to match it before focusing on Miss Prockling's latest lecture. Oh, I wanted to see that smile. As more time passes, the art contest fades into the background. Last week, I had a scare when Principal Scaler called me to her office. I feared that they figured out what Olivia did and assumed I was a part of it, just as she predicted. Luckily, that wasn't the case. Instead, she wanted to inform me that they had no leads as to who could have done the swap, and since it was tampered, it would be removed from the contest. No skin off my back, honestly. Thank God. As a compensation, she gave me one of the runner-up prizes, a coupon for some pizza from some Italian restaurant called Dynomos. Dynomos? What? Dynomos? I wonder who that could be. I wonder who that could be. Mo? <laughs> Dynomos? Really? Dynomos? I wonder. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. Dynomos. Wow. Wowza. <laughs> oh, man. This is funny. I love this. No skin off my back, honestly. It's compensation. Yep. Not the biggest pizza fan, but not a bad prize to get after all this. I love pizza. It's delicious. It's Latican, not Latican. Yatican? Latican? What do you mean? Snoot game reference. Yep. Latican is the best teacher. He is. Capitalized I. Oh, it is an I? It's not an L? Have I been saying it wrong this entire time? Am I that stupid? Am I that dumb? Are you telling me I'm that dumb? I can't be that stupid. You're good. Oh, well, thank you. Saving it for a rainy day. However, I found myself in a conundrum of my own doing. My peers' concerns about my entry were resolved. 
but I hadn't accounted for the new questions about my portfolio. My paint portfolio. The few times I showed off my photography for work, they'd be mildly impressed at best. They were never in front about it either. No, instead I got a, I got the runaround. Oh, well, yeah, these are nice, Inko. Not bad, not bad. But uh, what about what you did for the contest? I can't even be mad about it since it's just another misunderstanding, unintended lie from my side of things. That's actually really messed up because if you think about it this entire time, we've been led to believe it was actually his photo. But what really happened was it was never his. And they just looked at his other stuff and they were like, why is he showing? Dude, imagine it from their perspective. Let's empathize for a second with them and think that the fact of the matter is they were like, why is he showing us photography? Like, it's clearly something he likes, but he's not that good. That's so terrible. Aw. But then I had a thought. What if it wasn't a lie? What if I was actually good at painting? And after working at it for the past month... Yeah, no, I can't unscrew this. <laughs> for the past three weeks, I've been staying after school, making use of one of the club rooms to practice. Yeesh, Inko. Did you listen to any of the tips I gave you? Using everything I had at my disposal. Namely, the textbooks for Mr. Ladikin and how to tutorials online. I'd say as late as possible, trying to get to the same skill level as Olivia. That is not going to be easy. And I, I stare at the horrid acrylic monstrosity I have before me. I can do nothing but weep at my own inadequacies. Not actually weep, but squinting at the love crafty and horror before me. And I can maybe see a little progress running in the madness of the excess paint. Olivia had made good on her promise to teach me around at the same time I asked Mr. Ladikin, or Iadikin, to borrow the keys to the spare room. It would be easier if it was just Ladikin, I feel. I don't know how to, I don't know how to add using id. <laughs> I don't know either, guys. Oh my gosh, guys. Oh, this is funny, guys. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, Leo. You, how do I friend you guys? How do I give friends? How do I do that? How do you... Damn it. I don't know how to do that. I should probably put it behind the membership wall for Discord, but, like, I feel like I want to give it to you guys just because, even if you aren't going to membership... Because you could... Before the update. What do you mean, before the update? What? No, it's just username. Oh! Do I just have to give you my username? Oh, I'm so stupid. I thought I had to give you my code. Am I that dumb? Am I actually this skibbity stupid? Oh my goodness. Am I actually this doofus goobus? What? I can't be that dumb. Come on. Alright, here's my name. Here's my username. I'm gonna give you my username. Let me give you mine. Hey, give me yours, actually. Leo, give me yours so I can send it. Oh, right, here you go. You're on the creature. Thank you so much, Leo. That's very nice. I'm going to send you a friend request. Add a friend. Send friend request. It says that wasn't right. Apparently that wasn't right, Leo. You tricked me. You lied to me. You're a trickster. Oh, wait. Am I supposed to put the number as well? Is there supposed to be a number? Oh, you took... Oh. oh, I got it. You tricked me, Leo. I accepted your friend request. You tricked me. But I'll, I'll I'll forgive you. For tricking me. You trickster. <laughs> oh my gosh. Back to the game. And while I memorize all of her teachings down to the letter... What am I even looking at? Are you trying to do a, trying an abstract sort of thing here? It was an attempt at a self-portrait, actually. Could probably post it online and some rich asshole would buy it. <laughs> it's that good? No, never trust the opinions of people on the internet. Oh my gosh. I learned that the hard way. Oh, she had a deviant profile, probably, or something. After a brief period of awkward silence, I let myself collapse on the stool behind me and toss off the oily apron in frustration. At this rate, I'm going to be a double fraud or something. Crick. Oh no! Splat! I don't even have the energy to get angry. Probably looks better now, at least. I freaking knew she was going to say that. How did Olivia get so good at this? She's very witty. Olivia, please, you've got to have some actual advice for me. She quietly humps herself, slipping away a notebook she had played across her lap into her nearby bag. Well, when I want to draw, it's usually because I've got something on my mind. What, like inspiration? Kinda. More so I just envision something, and I want to put that on canvas. I'm used then. I really... Uh... The door of the studio flies open, and Damon quickly storms inside. Inko, Olivia, are you guys here? Y yeah. 
he takes heavy breath as his vision darts around the room. What happened? After a moment of surprise, I raised my arm to catch his attention. Damien, what's wrong? The hyperactive Delove, I can't say that, spots me, taking a final breath before dropping over. Gosh, I need to ask you something. Wait, was everything all right? What the hell happened? Is something happening? I can't help but panic, but I've never seen Damien this flustered. Do you want to come to the arcade with me and Liz? That's the question! Is is that it? Yeah, that's what I, I said. Wait, when was this decided? I thought something bad had happened. Nope, just asking. Liz has the car prepped and everything. Oh. I probably should have expected that, but still. How do you know we were here? I didn't. I just kept opening doors until I found you two. Oh, that's why he's out of breath. <laughs> Fucking wow. <laughs> it's just so goofy. Nice name, by the way. Oh, thanks, Leon. <laughs> what is this response, Leon? Gosh, oh my, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I've been at it for a while, actually. I, I can tell. Damien's eyes start to the canvas lies on the floor next to me. You working on your next masterpiece? Oh, yeah, totally, bro. I am an artistic visionary. Oh, painting sideways is probably one of your trade secrets, huh? Oh, God. Olivia hides her snicker with her hand. Olivia, this is your fault. Don't worry, I won't tell a soul. <sighs> yeah, that's right. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> I'll lean down to pick up the canvas and place it upright, deciding to remove the ugly painting and place it in the corner of the room to dry. Anyway, how about it? Tell you the arcade? The olive baryonics. Why is this the word you use? Just say gator. Fidgets. Her brow lowered in contemplation as she considers the question. The arcade? Uh, it's not like I had any other plans today. Sure, why not? Alright, let's go. Wait, don't just... Oh, oh. <laughs> Oh, and it falls, bro. Inko, Olivia, there you are. Damon was taking so long to get you, so I was about to come find you myself. This time, both Damien and I are wheezing for air. Despite Olivia's protest and hesitation, Damien had wasted no time to, to gra grabbing her by the handlebars and sprinting for the exit. I had chased after them, all the while Olivia screamed like a banshee as she was pushed through the hallways at a breakneck pace. Yeah, just... I take a deep breath and stand upright. Olivia's claws have dug into our armrests, and she's definitely trying to kill Damien with her glare, which she happily ignores. Why didn't you just message me or something? I wanted to, but I didn't want to ruin your concentration, man. Oh my gosh, this is so terrible. This is so bad. So instead, you kicked the art room door open. <laughs> yep. Liz had the good grace to look embarrassed on Damien's behalf. But yeah, I gave you a little bit of extra time, right? You've been staying late forever now. I can't hide the wince. It hadn't occurred to me that more people would notice. Ah, relax. Not like you're the only one. Yeah, I sometimes need to stay behind for student council and club meetings. Alright, sure. So, let me say this right now. I'm actually kind of scared for Liz, because I feel like Ben is the kind of person to start going after her just because... Just because, like... Ben doesn't seem to have... A happy connection to Olivia or me. I know people like that, by the way. You know, people who talk like that. It's uncomfortable. It's not good. <laughs> Guys, do I have W Sigma Riz? Do I have Sigma W Riz? I better have Sigma W Riz. Come on, the car's in the student section. Whee! The diner door start toward the student parking lot, heading towards rather old but well-kept sedan. Olivia grumbles silently to herself, but it follows over no after nonetheless. Come on, dude. It'll take a few minutes to get Olivia in, and then 30 to get to the arcade. I won't take that long, damn it. <laughs> wow. Olivia huffs and wheels herself to the passenger side, opening the door for herself. Do you need any... No! It's fine. <laughs> she gives me the look. To punctuate her statement, Olivia uses her strong arms to lift herself on her armrest. Then, with more grace than I thought possible from the olive-skilled girl, she manages to flop down onto the passenger seat. I stare at the abandoned chair, wondering where to put it. Probably in the back. I've got room in the trunk, Inko. Makes sense. Cool. Clunk! The trunk plits pops up with a heavy thunk to punctuate that. It takes me more time than I'd like to admit to figure out how to undo the locks to actually collapse the chair. But once it's done, I'm able to slide it into the spacious storage area easily. I've done this in real life with my grandma. Like, with her chair. So, I relate to this. 
Damon had already hopped through the window of the front passenger seat by the time I am done, as if he practiced the maneuver. Clack, clack, clack. I simply open the door behind Liz's seat and watch as a pile of soda cans empty onto the pavement below. Ah, sorry, those are from this morning. Jeez. I just toss them into the backseat when I'm done. Surprised Liz doesn't make you use a bag. I do. Damon pulls up an overflowing glass. <laughs> Why haven't you tossed all those bottles out already? I'm saving them for a project about recycling. Plus, I'm also going to use a couple of them for a sculpture. Saving the trouble of going out and finding aluminum. Oh, hey, that's smart. See, that's productive right there. And I get to drink as much soda as I want. Good for you, Damien. Drinking all those sports drinks. I don't really say anything as Damien scoops out the rest of the cans from the floor of the car and puts them in a new bag, which he then stuffs in the car's trunk before giving me and Olivia a thumbs up. All right, dudes. We're good to go. Oh, dude. Damien, dude, this is such a cool photo. Look at this. How is Liz going to... And I'm just going to ask this now out of, like, politeness. How is she gonna, um, what's it called? Oh, yeah, put, get inside. Like, how is she gonna fit in the car? Like, she has a long neck. She's a big girl, you know? She's a big girl. And I'm just questioning how she's gonna freaking, like, uh, you know, fit in the car. Like, is her head gonna be outside or what? <laughs> like, <laughs> how is this supposed to work? I nod and sink in a semi-clean seat. Man searches for the buckle of the seatbelt and brushes against something warm and soft. Oh, is that her thigh? There's a tiny gas next to me and the comfortable mystery in my hand is yanked away. Huh? Looked all over your hand held to her chest. Her green face has a scarlet tinge in her mirror. She glared. Oh, you okay? The emerald scarlet turns her mouth from me. I still have a mystery chuckle at that. The room leaves my hand feeling lost. What was that? Okay, all the safety checks are done. Oh, what the f- <laughs> Ah! <laughs> what the heck? Neck! How is your neck doing that? Oh my god, she... Okay, that's... You know what? That's an explanation I needed. That, that's... <laughs> oh my gosh. Neck. Dude, what the fuck? <laughs> what is this? Liz gets in the driver's seat and grips the steering wheel. Outside, she's craning her neck to chin, ch check on the mirrors and tires. Wait, Liz drives with her head sticking out the window? Liz pokes her head in. What's that? Her neck snakes in inside and coils around the hook in the middle of the car. Oh, there's the oh. Let me go. Okay, wait. That's what that hook is for. That is actually really clever. That's really clever. Then, with practice motion, her neck continues to coil until her head sits atop the neck rolls of no different from someone putting on shoes. That is a clever. That is a clever product right now. Whoever made that and patented that design probably is making some good money right now. Whoever's selling it, man. Kind of looks like a giant scale covered scarf. There's even still enough space for her to see the windows and check behind her. And go. Hmm? Oh, it wasn't anything important. All right, just <laughs> Liz. But uh, the city, right? I actually been wa wanting to see it up uh, a bit more up close for Ladigan's class. Do you know how much money, how much gas money it burned through to take a detour around here? Good, because neither do I. Let's do it. <laughs> well, hey, what? No. I barely have enough as is. The view on the way is fine. I'm looking forward to it as well. You sure? Yeah, I'll point out some stuff I remember along the way. Mm, you're my tour guide now. Don't make me change my mind. <laughs> God, that's settled. Everyone's buckled in, right? Liz pulls away from the school parking lot, starting down the opposite direction I've always entered and ex exited. Weird to think, but the edge of my world was so close as to a right turn out of my own school. Then again, I still haven't been living here long. Anybody want a station? I don't think I've ever listened to the radio here either. Liz and Olivia hardly seem to glance in Damien's direction as well. Suit yourselves. Within the span of a few seconds, the natural ambience of the road is replaced with the loud sound of decades-old rock music sending vibrations through the air car and everybody in it. Just as fast as it comes, however, it stops as Liz have hazard lengths of volume knob counterclockwise, toning the music down to a bearable le level. Damien frowns for a moment, but doesn't seem to contest her decision. Bzzz. What the? I turned off all the notifications except for messages and calls. And between all the people I messaged, there's only one who isn't inside the car. Is it Ben? Oh, it's Damien. Any song request, man? Seriously? I don't know, Damien. So long as it isn't changing country music. Aw. Sure, sure. What, you've been texting? Apparently. Apparently we have, I guess. Gator side view. Let me just get the... Let me just get a screenshot of this so I can I can upload it. Wait, you've been texting how long? Yeah, since like the first week of school. 
<laughs> what the heck, dude? Let me see your phone. <laughs> oh, that's actually funny as hell. That's funny. Dude, this is so funny, man. This game, I love it. I just really do. One second. Gator. Gator side view. Putting that in the downloads folder. What the heck, dude? Let me see your phone. I hand it over, open on the contact creation page. She taps the first few numbers and pauses. Then sheepishly yanks her phone from her coat pocket. She doesn't know her own number? <laughs> dude, that's something I've done, okay? I know my number now, but sometimes it happens, okay? Olivia finishes tapping her number and hands it back. She just gave me her number? She's entered herself as Live Long. <laughs> huh, sounds vaguely oriental. Live Long. That's funny. Oh, you have to go, Leo? Bye, Bye Leo. Bye. Bye-bye. Oh, man. This is funny. Bzz. Test. Yep, got it. Bzz. <laughs> Live long as typing. Oh, no! Rat! Ah! <laughs> oh, my gosh. I better not get sent to the gulag for that one. You know, I'm probably already in the gulag, and I don't even know it. I'm going to get sent to prison for that. YouTube is going <laughs> to prison me, bro. Oh my gosh, that wasn't called for. That's why I sent it. You sent me a rat giving me the middle finger. Why would you do that to me, Liv? I'm streaming, Liv. Oh, you know what? I just realized I'm calling her Liv now because of the Liv Long. Side view gator. How could you freaking do this to me? How could you do this to me, Olivia? She giggles at her own joke, and despite being the butt of it, the mood in the car is too high to hold it against her. Alright, alright, I see, I see how it is. I hold it against her anyway. <laughs> uh, for along the dense forest, she starts giving way to more urban developments. More and more decorative palm trees start dotting the path as well. The silhouette of the city gets closer, and we approach one of the spaghetti junctions leading up to it. This is so similar of... This is so similar to Volcadera Bluffs, like the portion where Anon lives, I feel like. The result of decades of poor infrastructure decisions, multi-million dollar projects promising to fix all the tracks if they just built one more overpass. Olivia's paying close attention to her phone. She scrolls lazily through some forum. Pretty. What's so funny? Oh, uh, nothing. Hey. Lizard Lounge? Oh, boy, you're still browsing that, Olivia? Oh, is she, is she a browser? Yeah. What is it? Don't tell him. It's this weird exclusionary chat room that only they only allow dinosaur woman men and rather specifically human men are banned. <gasps> Dude, it's racism. Yo, she's based. <laughs> kind of reminds me of 4chan where women are banned. Oh, <gasps> Damien, racial segregation. <laughs> ah! Isn't it specious segregation, dude? Why is Damien? They couldn't have a different dude. <laughs> I'm, I'm freaking snapping this. Racial segregation? What? He's just smiling with a point. He's like, that's my thing, gal. Racial segregation. Gation. Damien. <laughs> Racial segregation? What? All right, this reminds me of this new game a lot. Olivia showed me it once. The people on it are really weird. Humans are banned? You weren't supposed to tell them. Aww. It's the last safe house for us on the internet. Oh my gosh, she's racist. She's so based, guys. <laughs> to keep the purity. <laughs> 4chan reference, yeah. <laughs> I think there's probably better places for that online for you to associate with. Tell me about the racial segregation. It's not that. It's just how it was. It has to be for our safety. Some dino girl can be doing anything at all. And there's always at least three guys in the comments saying she looks like... Don't say it. They also really bring down the quality of the site. Look, it's explained in the rules that humans have one-fifth the attention span of dinos. Oh my god, she's so freaking racist. She's so specious. Liz groans <laughs> while Lizzie shows me her phone. The graph is blurred to hell and I can't make out most of the text. I don't know how I feel about all this... <laughs> What's not to get in go? <laughs> ah! Think about it. You're in history class. It sucks. So you just remember. Wait a second. I'm human. And stop listening. 
bro. That's not how that works. He's racist. <laughs> I wish I could do that. According to Lady... <laughs> it's just a funny group of women like me. Lay off. Let me have it. You don't really believe that stuff, do you? <laughs> not really. It's just the rules of the place, all right? This is 4chan reference. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Uh, was Raja the arcade always this long? I think we're about 20 minutes away from the arcade still. Don't worry, Inko. The water fountains are integrated. Dude! Dude! Oh my gosh! Dude, it's so racist! It's so racist! Oh my gosh! The racism is palpable! Oh my gosh! Dude! Oh my... Shut up. Oh my god. Damien cackles to himself. This is another side of Damien we haven't seen. Alright, hope the place still sells those hot dogs for just a dollar, bro. Inflation got me like. Nuh uh. <laughs> this is terrible, bro. There's no way anyone uh, anywhere sells hot dogs for a dollar anymore. You know, my memberships are for a dollar. Oh god, I hate that's such a shame. That's such a shameless plug in. Oh my gosh. You know, my memberships are, are just a dollar. Just 99 cents, guys. <sighs> Shameful plug-in. Puts in chat. Guys, 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 check out my, my, my membership, guys. Oh, my gosh. It's in the link in the description below, guys. It's, it's in the chat. It's in the... Bonk. Such a shameless plug-in. <laughs> Dude, inflation really got me like... Guys, it was just 50 cents. Now it's $5. <laughs> it's like Venezuela all over again. Yeah, but they did. It was great. Olivia and I would save our lunch money to just go here instead of after class. I don't think I trusted if it were still that cheap, honestly. <laughs> you know what? Honestly, Olivia, that's a good point. You ate a dog off the floor. One wow. That's different. <laughs> Damien fills the air with his old tales of his and Olivia's adventures in the arcade. She'd occasionally chime in to correct him on whatever um, over-embellishment, even as the last remin remnants of suburbia melt away and skyscrapers scrapers overtake our view of the outside world. Finally, I'm in the big city. Here we are. I'm almost disappointed when we pull into the arcade parking lot. Large glass windows <laughs> covered in the sub... <laughs> well, at least it's integrated. Sun-bleached formational <laughs> leaflets adorn the front of the arcade, and the building itself looks a couple decades old. This place was probably successful in the past, but I can only imagine they break even nowadays. Though maybe the recent resurgence of rest, Retro Deco could change that. I can show you more on the return trip. Come on. Alright. Guess you must have seen my brief hesitance. Liz unlocks the trunk and I hop out to get Olivia's chair. As I attempt to heave the thing out of Liz's trunk, it takes considerably more effort than I'd like to admit. Now how do I unfold this blasted thing? I think there's a release button right He. Oh, dang. <laughs> yeah, that, that happens. Pop. As I checked to make sure that all my fingers were intact, I could see Olivia snickering through the passenger window. Inko-san, you have much to learn. Observe. <laughs> Olivia makes sure the brakes are held and heaves herself over in one motion. The chair is first opened by momentum alone with a loud crack. She graced through the walls by me, tongue stuck out in a smug victory over my ineptitude. Ready. Sweet. All right, Damien hurries us inside. I can tell you he's the most excited out of, to be here out of anybody. All right, guys, listen up. All right, so memberships, they help a lot with the channel. Donos as well, everything. It all helps a lot, and you get perks if you're a member. I have to, I think I have to end the stream now because it's kind of late for me, and it's just like I got to do some stuff IRL. I've been working on some stuff on the side, but I just want to say thank you to everyone that chimed in to the stream. It's great. And with that having been said, Sigma W Riz, goodbye, everyone. Peace. We'll take another stream in like a day or two. Do, 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 do. Do, do. Actually, I'm going to just vibe out for a second. I'm ending the stream, guys. Bye!